Good morning, good people. Happy Saturday. Welcome to Mastermind Academy. You know, I gotta gotta speak a little bit to, I usually don't wake up in the morning and start talking to people, but happy Saturday, everyone. Uh, you got Sponge, happy Saturday. It's good to see you. Welcome. I'm glad we could all come together. Watching the stream, the stream looks okay right now. I think we're we're making some progress here. I learned a lot. I, mean, I changed some settings. The one day, our, our issue was at, was what was network. Um, we have some resolutions for that. I could stream out of the office. I'm gonna do my best not to stream out of the office because we're gonna have a I have a wife that is uh you know we gotta she's she's almost there. We got ten weeks left to go in the pregnancy, so you know I want to be here. So I did. Uh, I talked to Comcast. They uh, they helped me out a little bit. Also, um, they're gonna get me um, they're gonna get me a business class line here as well, which is good. Just so you know, I have a little redundancy, and, and you know I can make sure things are are working fine because. We can't have that happen, but I did figure out some computer issues. So I might need to make some changes to my computer, which sucks because my computer is super powerful, but you know, things gotta be purpose built. <laughs> um, but yeah, cause I want to be able to record. I want to be able to record this stuff. Uh, I, I can record it right now in the, in the same way that it's streamed, but I wanted to do, there's some things I wanted to do with it, uh, but I'll figure that out later. It's not a big deal. We just want to make sure the stream is good. Uh, yes, I am streaming through the 6400, A6400 right now. Yep. Uh, through a, it's the A6400 going through uh, an Elgato 4K. I have two 4K capture cards. Um, and so I might be having band with problems. I've, I've been diving through the logs. My computer should be powerful enough. Go with the M1. So <clears throat> Willie Mammoth, couple couple problems with the M1. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, that I'm gonna wait, that I'm gonna wait for before I do anything with that uh, one port selection and and uh and bandwidth uh through the bus uh, it has has far reduced bandwidth through the bus that's why there's only uh reduced to two thunderbolt ports on the machines and i still need to wait for some compatibility to happen and we gotta wait for gotta wait for those uh m1x chips um cause I'll, definitely i'll consider it um uh, but i don't think it has anything to do with it it so it has to do with the real time real time recording and real time i'm trying to, sh to record in a different format than i stream and it's like doubling up on some of the the work on the processor, which is really weird. Like I I, I did learn a lot about it. I understand why. Um, I just have to change some things and test some things out. But what are we doing today? We are recovering from our lost day, and today is decoded. We are going to be learning all about strings, and it you know we should be able to dive through this pretty quickly. So we're going to hop straight into it and learn some things. Now I think what well, happened to the classroom? I think that the slides already dropped. But let's see if they didn't. Um, let's see what those slides are doing. Pretty sure I posted them already. Uh, decoded, decoded. And this was the day four slides. So cool. And I'll share these. I'll update the slides command right now. And make sure anyone can get it. Uh, do it up here. Commands. All right, there you go. If you want the slides, hit exclamation point slides and you can now get the slides. Uh, but today should be pretty chill. Uh, the con I, I, I really like Decoded in particular because we can focus on a singular concept a lot of the days. So this is going to be super helpful, especially since we get two days per week. Um, yeah, so tonight we're going to be learning all about strings. So we're going to learn a little bit about the Go standard library. So a little bit about documentation and then a bunch of stuff about strings. So there's a lot of stuff in here. So it's not only going to be strings and, and it's not only going to be specifically strings, but it's going to be about manipulation of text. Um, a lot of things in regards to that characters, understanding uh, how all of this stuff works. So. Uh, going to be a few different concepts in here, but uh, mostly related to those words and those phrases that we were talking about. So agenda first, I want to introduce you to the Go standard library. All right. This is, we talked about documentation in technical things and how it can be tough to parse. We went and looked through it a little bit, but let's talk about what the Go standard library is because uh, it's a, it's a big thing and it's pretty important. You can actually learn a ton, uh, like pretty much everything that you need to do you can do with the with the standard library of go standard library of go simply being the um the tools and packages which uh, 
Golang gives you by default. So go.org. So you can go to the link that I gave you that that package.go.dev um, or you can go to godoc.org if you'd like. But this is where the standard packages that Go has exist and where you can find documentation for them. Um, it's hard to know everything that's in here. Very difficult to know all the things that are in here, but there's a lot of stuff here and there's some good, <clears throat> there's some decent search functionality um, that you can use. All the Go standard library stuff is in here. So there's this Go standard packages uh, thing over here on the side. And you know if you go to package.go slash STD, that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the Go standard library. And it goes through and it shows you all the different tools you can import. So when you see that import command in, in, our, in our code and we're importing FMT or FMT, uh, we are importing a, a suite of tools that is already built into the Go programming language. And it's super helpful. It, it's, it's really nice. And Go has a lot of those. Why is that better than grabbing some kind of cool packages uh, from something that some random person on GitHub made? Well, that is something you can do now, but the goal is to be able to use the standard library as much as possible because, uh, tr you know, traditionally, and, and you, you can believe it's gonna be a little bit safer because, you know, it's written by, it's written and vetted by a lot more people than just you grabbing someone else's code offline um, that anyone can go write. Uh, but again, they, they, they're very thoughtful tools in helping you get what you need done. <clears throat> so as much as possible, we're gonna focus on using things out of the standard library, okay? So a bunch of different things. One of the things that will make you great at Go, <clears throat> one of the things that'll make you great at Go is to get familiar with these things. Do not, I'm not telling you to memorize these things at all. I'm not familiar with memorizing these things. What helped me out, honestly, is a, a guy um, named Johnny Borsico. Uh, he's pretty dope, and he's, he's pretty big in the GoLang community. He has a, uh, a packed publishing course, and I'll share the link in the Google Classroom for it. But he um, shared a packed publishing course uh, about Go standard library solutions. So he's got a bunch of different problems, a bunch of different scenarios in which you'd want to solve things, and the standard library solutions really help. Now, I don't necessarily think if you're just starting out, uh, that's going to be a useful course for you yet. Uh, but I want to introduce you to it. Um, you're going to hear me talk about the standard library a lot. You're going to hear people talk about the standard library or not. This is a suite of tools that Go has built in that you can use. And uh, so when you win, when you run that import, you already have access to these things. Um, it's already it's already set up on your system. Uh, you just you know you don't always need to use these tools in every application. So they have you import them when you need them. Okay. So again, that that foamed package you can actually see what it is when we use that to print out things to standard output the package fmt implements formatted io input output with functions analogous to c's printf scanf the format verbs are derived from c's but are simpler again may not be super helpful but uh it does tell you what's going on here and the more and more you learn the more and more documentation like this will make sense and you'll understand their examples and how they're explaining things and how to use this stuff Cook the Ryan, absolutely, but definitely perfect time to join. With, with that's today we're gonna be focusing mostly on Go. We'll do some, we'll do Python as well, but we'll be post, focusing mostly on Go uh, today. Cool. So let's hop straight into it because oh, it's Saturday and we should get out of here as quickly as possible. So strings, all about strings, and again, there's more, there's more in here than just string related things, but it's mostly things related to strings and, and surrounded by words and phrases and characters. And so let's understand these things. So. A little recap, what are strings in all languages? Strings are simply a list of characters strung together. This is the best way I like to explain it for people to understand why the word is called string. It's a list of characters that you know have a string running through them, just like I kind of did right here. This is a string. Then words and phrases. Again, double quotes. Whenever you see double quotes, think string. 100% think a string. When you see single quotes, maybe a string, depending on the language. Could be a string, maybe it's not a string. Cook the Ryan coming in hot Saturday morning with the war on advertisements now you know uh what's that uh months months fmd you know you no longer have to watch ads for a month for a whole month and i hope you are appreciative of that and i hope that you you give cook the ryan all your thanks appreciate the love and the support there all right so that's all string is we talked about that already we should be good there runes we talked about runes as well, but this is uh, also related. It's interesting when it's related because of the data type that this is, but it is related here. So rune, 
It's an alias for Ant32. We talked about that. So what is an alias? Alias is just uh, another word uh, that we can use, almost like a variable, <laughs> um, but it's, it's another word that we can use to also um, to also reference Ant32. So we can say, you know, we say rune, but really underneath it's an Ant32. Uh, it's like a nickname for it almost, um, but it references a character, okay? Uh, it's used to emphasize the ASCII encoding of a character. All right, so that is, that's why we would use a rune. Um, there are bytes as well, but we're not gonna get in there yet. We, we, we have deeper to go before we like really start to compare those things, but it's used to emphasize that this thing is an is ASCII encoded. It is a, it is a character um, in ASCII encoding format, okay? How often are runes used? Um, so in the real world, probably not that, I mean, probably not that often. Like, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not like a 0% thing. I, 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 I don't really, I don't have a good answer for you here, but like, I would say it's something you you definitely need to be familiar with. Um, you probably won't use it to solve a ton of, a ton of like real world problems. You probably use it a lot to solve all kinds of these like uh, code wars challenges and, and, and stuff on exorcism.io and stuff. Like you probably use it a lot for stuff like that, but, um, but probably not in the real world. It depends. It depends. There, there's some, there are some good use cases for it. Like, now they have tools for this, but let's say you wanted to check whether or not something was an alphanumeric character. The way that you could check whether or not it was an alphanumeric uh, manually without having to use some kind of outside package would be to make it a rune. So see what see what rune number it is, see what ASCII number. Remember I showed you the ASCII table? So maybe the number, uh, the letter A, uh, the lowercase letter A, maybe it's equal to 66, I think, or 67. And so I can say, hey, convert this letter to a number to, to its ASCII number, and if it falls between this range, then it's, a, then it's an alphanumeric character, but if it falls outside, it might be some other type of character. So maybe you wanna do something like that, but yeah, it definitely depends on, you know, it depends on the software you write. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. So again, it's an alias for int32. Uh, so whenever uh, whenever you need to do anything with a rune, um, it's really gonna be referencing the number, but remember runes are singular characters, okay? So Let's go, let's go to the code right now. Let's, uh, let's, let's go to our code that we started writing already. So I'm gonna get logged into VS Code, which is done with, uh, what is it? It's going through uh, Linode, but I can't remember which one I'm logged into here. So I gotta make sure I put in the right password. I really need to set up my SSH keys for this, but uh, okay, that worked. Look at that, we are phenomenal. I changed, oh, oh also as you can see, we got a little, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of things looking good on, on, on my desktop. I need, I need to be inspired to do anything. <laughs> I need to be inspired and having a beautiful editor really helps you feel cool. Uh, so all I did was change the theme. I didn't do anything crazy. If you want to have this exact theme, click on your extensions, type in legendary dark is right here and click install. Okay. It'll install it really fast for you. Uh, I'm gonna show this again. Uh, it will, it will install this for you now to change your, it, like if you, after you install it, it might automatically uh, have you selected. But if you want to change your theme in the future, if you want to install a bunch of themes and you want to move between them, the way that you can do this is you can hit the, the fastest way to do it is the shortcut for it is control. If you hold control and hit K T. Oh, that did not work. Hold on. Control K T. Whoa, hold on. That's supposed to work. I don't know why that's not working. Okay. So if you don't, if that doesn't work or you can hit command K T that should work. But if not, you hit control P and then you do the little carrot. And I think you just type in theme, I think, uh, or, huh, actually, see, I told you all I'm new to, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've been doing the Vim thing. I'm kind of new to this. I don't know how to change it. Hold on. I, I swear it's control KT. They used to work for me everywhere else. I guess you can go to view and appearance. Nope. I made that up on the spot. It just seemed to like it was right. So I threw it out there, uh, but it didn't stick. Okay. <laughs> I threw it out there, but that didn't stick at all. Um, okay, I don't know how to change it, but click on it and uh, control KT should do it or command KT, but I don't know, I don't know. All right, so, oh, file preferences. See, you know, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I, I, I really have really, like, my brain is like completely split right now in the, because I, I dove so deep into uh, all terminal, like using the terminal for all things, it's like, it's like really, uh, oh, no, nah, no, nah, nah, it shouldn't be. No, nah, I, nah, I shouldn't have to be an answer mode. So I am using Vim key bindings, everyone. Hmm, that just seems super, that seems super crazy. Preferences, 
Uh, see, yeah, there is Control K, Control T. That's it. Oh, maybe it's Capital. Is it Control Shift? Now that would be whack. Now, nah, yeah, I don't know. Mine is just not working. Okay, so I was right. I was right about that. See, I, I try to learn the key bindings whenever I can. So Scott Pickens, thank you so much for the follow. Stan Lefresh, welcome to the channel. Good to have you both. Okay, so this is the, some old stuff that we did. Um, something needs to be saved. I don't really know which thing. It, oh, it's, no, I'll put that go. It's saved. But I'll close it. Um, sure, I'll save it. So here's what we'll do. That folder that we were working out of, one, you can actually get it. You can actually, if you're new to the channel and you want to grab what we've already done, we're just, we're just messing around inside of GitHub and we are basically just creating little example files for the things that we are learning, for the concepts that we are learning right now. And so you can grab that. And the way that you can grab it is to go to, I'll give you the link for it right now. No, not DevOps Bootcamp. We are on, let's go to repositories. Got a bunch of stuff. We keep creating stuff. Decoded Q1 2021. And we'll clone this and we'll paste it. Yeah, I do. I, I really like the theme. Sure, I really like it. This is Python, correct? This is, uh, so right now we're writing Go. We're writing both Go and Python in this class, mostly Go, about 65% Go, uh, about 35% Python. Um, and again, we're, we're doing that specifically because uh, a compiled language, like a uh, compiled statically typed language like Go is going to present uh, a little bit more, um, it's gonna to present to us a little bit more uh, concepts that we need to learn and to understand. And I wanna make sure that we cover those things. So you can clone that if you wanna clone it. And we will do both here. We're gonna do both uh, both Go and Python if you can see right here. So we're still in week two. Um, we're, we're still in week two, so we'll stay in this folder right now. And let's make some files really quick. And let's make a new file here called strings.go, okay? And usually, like I said, if you set this up, if we, if we had set this up a little bit different, uh, if you ever create a new, oh, actually, that's not in the right place, is it? That's not in the right place. How do I move this? There we go. All right. If you create, if you if you have everything properly set up and there weren't any other Go, um, any other Go files here, and you we had done this uh, in a, as a part of our Go workspace and our Go path, it would probably, I, I believe it'll it'll give you the base structure for your application already, but that didn't happen because of the way things are set up right now. So let's go ahead and set up our base stuff. Remember, what do we need? Let's, re let's reinforce what we need in it, what we need in Go. We need to set up uh, our package. So the package is gonna be main. No, not week two. Package is gonna be main. That's the first thing. Now, we don't need that import line um, unless we want to import something. So I'm actually not gonna put it in this time, even though I said we need it. We do need it. I wanna show you something cool uh, that we haven't talked yet about, about Go's compiler and the way that it works. But we do need that main function. So how do we do that? We do func. Try not to look at my keyboard. I'm trying to learn how to type without it. Main. And right now, um, let's do let's do the main hello world uh, here. So we do format.println. Try to remember what that does. Uh, print line. whoa. And we'll put a string in here and just put hello for now. Okay, so this is the this is the code. Um, this is the code, this is the base code for, again, a Go application, just a, the standard setup. Where, where can you go if you ever need a reference? If you ever need a reference, remember you can go to play.golang.org and you can literally copy what's here. But you can see we don't have this import. Things from that, that exist in the standard, standard library, tools that exist in the standard library like FMT, um, Go is smart enough to know um, where to get those from and that you wanna use this thing when you do type it in. So if I were to do this and I go to save it, it automatically imports, okay? Check that out. The line is now here and it automatically imports, which is excellent, okay? Very, very exciting. So good, it's, it's one of the greatest things. Another thing you haven't seen yet is that Go's compiler also does standard formatting. So it automatically uh, formats the syntax of, of your code, which is good, which is, a, which is a great thing. I think it's a great thing, it is a great thing, but it can be confusing to a lot of people and uh, you know everyone has their own style of coding. 
things like how many tabs you use, how many spaces you use. All these things are, are different. And something like Python, those tabs and spaces cause, cause a lot of problems. Here in Go, uh, it'll still work, um, but, but it'll automatically format your code into a standardized format. And so when I go to save it right now, it automatically will do that to the code, to the entire code base. I can also run a command to actually do that as well. So just, just showing you something, if you ever type in something and it looks like it's changes up your code, it might be changing up your code a little bit. It might be pulling in imports for you from the standard library. Uh, and then it might be, uh, it, it might be also formatting your code. So just a little, a little bit of extra there. Blue screen 539. Thank you so much for the tier one. It's good to have you. But yeah, standardized is formatting and it's really good. So some people have, some people think it's the best thing. Some people think it's the worst thing, but I think it is a good thing. It may not be the formatting that you're used to, but it's really, really good. Where's the time we had to just insert a CD-ROM and click EXE and play? Ah, uh, yeah, you know, well, so that, you know, a compiled language, you know, that's, it's kind of like that, you know, you just download it instead now and you click EXE and you play. Um, another thing is you might come from other compiled languages and be like, and say, hey, why didn't, don't I have to put semicolons in at the end of every line? Okay. No, I type that in. It's still fine. I can actually run. Uh, let's see, go run strings that go. I can actually run this and it'll still work. While it'll still work, it removed it from it from here actually. But uh, the semicolons are actually there, but they are not there in the source code. Remember what's the source code? It's the human readable code that you write semicolons make that source code uh more unreadable to be honest um and they don't want you to have to worry about that those semicolons are still there but they they are they're inserted uh at, at compile time so the compiler is actually handling that for you uh so you don't have to worry about that at all really nice i really hate semicolons so there we go you know there, there we go so uh one of the reasons why you also see this problem this error don't worry about this right now um don't worry about the underlined main for anything that's main related leave it it has to do with the way we are organizing this folder right now uh there's another main file so remember go is a compiled language i told you that this main function this main package and main function says hey this is where you uh, start your program when we compile this this is where the program starts so so this is where this is your entry point into the application the problem is this other file here has we already have main in here so now this has two files that are specifying main saying hey i you know you already, you already declared this thing um, and now I'm confused. Don't worry about it, it will still work uh, for now. I, I can move it out to, to a different folder uh, to kind of change that up um, so you can see it better. But for now, this will be fine. Just ignore the little underline there. You will get this as well. Uh, but the code, as you saw, will still run. Okay, so strings. First, let's, let's do the same thing we did last time. Let's, let's set up an example of a string really quick. So this is an example of a string and actually hello world is is exactly that. And maybe we can do a couple of examples and maybe we can set up a variable called again, our string. Just again, we're, we're, we're hammering home the stuff. I know we've already done this and it is a type string and we can now set our string equal to this is a test. All right, cool. We just got something there. Exciting, the most fun, all good. Where can you find the previous videos? Hit exclamation point YouTube. All of the videos for this week are rendered out. They have not been uploaded yet uh, because I was having internet issues, upload issues here uh, at the house, but um, they will be uploaded today because they are fixed. Um, but there are two playlists on there, uh, three playlists on there. So if you head over there, there's three playlists on my channel. There is uh, Decoded Pipeline, the, like the most recent ones, Decoded Pipelines and Horizons, they are there so you can grab them. All right, so we just have our strings, all good. Um, we're not doing anything with our strings, so it's gonna fail. Um, so let's actually print this out as well, like we did last time. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, it's early. Need a little bit of water. <clears throat> all right, there we go. So we got hello and we got this as a test. 100%, you can 100% link it, I appreciate that. Like, go, yeah, go, I appreciate you asking that, but definitely, definitely link it for sure. Any resources are great. <clears throat> Ooh, I, I, I'm all, so I'm, I'm a, I'm a new fan of, uh, I'm a new fan of, of hacking, of like, uh, of trying to understand th that world. Um, this is cool. I'll, I'll definitely check this out. Dope. 
Um, I also save this. I'm also add this to the to the resources of what we have. If anyone, uh, well, there's a resources channel of the Discord. I can I can throw this in there as well. All right. So that you know, basic strings, great. But we were talking about runes just now. So a rune in in Go is denoted by a uh, a single single quotes will denote a rune. So runes are characters. So this means that you can't do this to a whole word or phrase. So you can say this is an example of a rune. And if you try to do something like var uh, our rune, one, it is, it, if you type in rune, um, it's gonna work. I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work just fine. <clears throat> but remember what, 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 remember what data type it really is. It is a data type of n32 now. The, the difference here, the difference here is if you made it N32, N32 could fall outside of the bounds of what an ASCII character is. Again, we can look at that ASCII table and let's so letters and numbers, you know, they, they might go into the hundreds <clears throat> for what those are. But, uh, you know, an, an N32 can be very, very large um, and it could fall outside of that. But if we do, if we set our room and we set it equal to, if we try to do something like this, this will fail, okay? Why will it fail? Because it needs to be a singular character here. And if we try to do a format dot print line, why is it giving me printf? Like as an as an example, um, we'll try to print out our rune. Let's actually let's do do that. Let's do that one. Let me show you what type it is. Let's print the type of this. So type um, sent t, and let's also do value. So we can see what the actual value of the rune is. Whoops. Oh no. Oh no. We're having trouble here. Oh no. This is this is not going well. Um Whoops. Let me do this. Value and the value will be uh Let's go percent v it because I'm not 100% sure. And so we'll just do our rune. You're about to learn you're going to learn about this printf thing in a second, okay? Um Later today, for sure, because it's confusing. A rune and man, I I I, I should have practiced typing this morning so I could be on it. Um, so what is it going to do really quick? It's going to print out the type of the rune and the value of the rune when we run this. Okay, so don't don't worry about this formatting. Don't worry about this syntax, anything like that. We just want to see that one. I tried to set a rune and we already have an error here. Okay, and we put our mouse over it. It says, hey, invalid character literal, uh, more than one character. This is again, just to tell you that this needs to be one character. So let's let's uh, let's get it down to one character and let's just make it the letter G. All right, letter G. And now we save it. And when we go to run this, what do you think it's gonna be? What's the type of this gonna be? What do you think the type is gonna be? What do you think the value is gonna be? All right, I think the type you know, it's, it, we said the type was a rune and we said the value is G. So at first glance, you might think it's going to say rune and G, but if you look at it right now, um, it says type in, uh, okay, hold on. Let's, let's add a new line character in here. Run it again, make it a little cleaner. We see that the type is an int 32. Remember it's an alias, rune is an alias for int 32. So. You know, it, it got alias in 32 and the value is 103. It is not G. The value of this is, is 103. It is not G. Again, it is to, to show you that this is an ASCII encoded character. And again, if you Google ASCII table, you can see the value of different characters uh, in ASCII format. So yeah, there are, you know, that's, that's the gist of kind of how the rune works. You can, uh, we'll talk about casting in a little bit, but I can, I can make this printout string instead. I can make this printout G if I needed to, but yeah, there we go. What's up, Chopper? Good to see you. Spray Nights, good to see you as well. A blue screen, I don't know if I thanked you, but thank you so much for the sub four months. I appreciate it. That's love right there. All right, what is your advice for beginners? I think people are saying persistence. It 100% persistence. So I, I would say the thing that I wish that I did, hindsight, is, is this may not be good for everyone. Now, people learn different ways, so understand how, how you learn best. Um, I wish that I would have immersed myself in it up front rather than you, you try to go through 
uh, we talk about learning being nonlinear, and I tried to go through uh, learning how to code in a very linear fashion. And you you hit a you hit a block, you hit a roadblock, and you you might hit it really early on and be like, I don't understand this thing. Maybe you got to runes, and you're like, bro, I like the word is rune. Why isn't it in thirty two? Like, why are these where are these percent things coming from? I don't understand what's happening. And you get frustrated and you stop uh, thinking that you need to get over this hurdle to get to all the rest of the stuff. And it becomes this. It becomes this like climbing, climbing the mountain type thing, uh, and, and now you're stuck and you can't progress anymore. That is un, that's untrue uh, when it comes to learning anything, uh, immersing yourself in it, hearing all kinds of different things. There'll be concepts that you get that you don't get. There'll be words and things and phrases. There'll be stuff that you understand and don't understand. Um, but you start to pick up a lot of these things through osmosis, and some of it you don't even realize you're understanding yet. And I wish I would have just simply just persistence is number one, definitely persistence. Uh, but I think I think that. Uh, immersing yourself in in these things it's it's okay to move on to a different piece of learning when you're stuck on one thing it's okay to you know it's okay to not understand a piece you don't no one no one knows like you might think everyone oh this person has five years of experience i'm telling you i'm telling you there are people right now who make well six figures and and have no idea what a rune is and have and nev never need to use one um so just persistence number one two i really think you should immerse yourself in it. Read a bunch of articles, watch a bunch of different videos, you know, try like go. I think Twitch is one of the best places for this and go watch people build things. Go watch, like, you're like, hey, I have no idea what they're doing. Just watch and listen. You can go, wa just go watch and listen. I think you'll get a lot out of it. All right, so let's keep it moving. So that's Rune, single character, if you want to think about it that way, but it's really a number. All right, and you can kind of convert them back and forth and we'll see that in a little bit. Special characters, okay? So really anything that's not a um, alphanumeric uh, character is is a special character. So even punctuations and stuff are special characters. Uh, there are two things that happen have that have to happen with these things. Uh, one, I just want to introduce you to some, some special characters um, so that you probably have never seen them before. Uh, oh, that's a good one, I should set that up. Um, for the theme, OG Jake, that theme, for this is, I'm gonna set that command up right now, is Legendary Dark. Um, commands add theme, oops. Legendary Dark, there we go. Cool, now you can do the theme command, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah. But special characters, you may have, you may have not ever uh, been introduced to these things, so just wanna, get you to understand these a little bit. So you've seen me type in this back, this for, uh, backslash in a few times, and that is what's called a new line character. So there are uh, ASCII characters, there are, or, or combinations of characters, because uh, the, the slash, we'll talk about what it is in a second, but uh, it allows us to do other things or, or to input other things. So things like new lines, how do you go to the next line? What, what you know, how do you go to the next line? How do you create a tab? Uh, if you are formatting text or something, how do you create a tab without having to type in a tab? How do you uh, do a vertical tab or a carriage return? Carriage return is uh, simply enter. Uh, think like old typewriters. It is, you know, hit enter, go down to the next line, uh, which which is similar to a new line. But they do operate a little bit differently. But these are some of the more popular ones. Slash N, slash T. Uh, you'll see slash N a lot. Um, you'll see slash T a fair amount as well. You probably won't see slash V or slash R that often. These more will come into play a little bit later when we are doing string formatting, but that's what's happening here. Uh, what's happening when we do, let's close this. What's happening when I do this special character right here is it is creating a new line there. And I can also do something like this. I could also put a tab in between. So let's, let's, let's try this out a little bit. Let's try some of the stuff. So let's put a new line in between these two things. Let's put a new line right here and see how it changes the output. Remember, I'm getting the type of this thing and I'm getting the value of this thing. And I, I put type here as a little, uh, type and value here are like little labels, little little string text labels. Uh, because look, this whole thing is actually in double quotes. So this whole thing is a string. You're gonna learn a little bit more about how this is working. But if we do this and we stick a new line character right in the middle, let's see what it looks like. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm gonna run it and check this out. I did not add a new line character to the end. I didn't leave that there, but it type it, it, it prints out type in 32 and then a comma. So that's this part right here. Then the new line character is, is uh, evaluated. Whoa. New line character gets evaluated. So it drops down to, it enters a new line. 
then it prints out value 103 and then printf works like print and not like print line remember we looked at those differences print prints out the text and print line prints out the text but also appends a new character uh, a new line character at the end of it so no new line characters at the end of here so our prompt is brought back right at the end of this because there's no new line inserted, okay? So that's what new line does. And I'll, let me put a new line back at the end here because I don't like that. All right, but if we do something like a tab, let's check that out. Let's see what happens when we tab it. Right in the middle there. When we tab it right in the middle there, uh, it just extends the space. A tab, just like you're used to doing, it spaces it out as well. We can do the same thing with a vertical tab. You probably haven't seen a vertical tab, so let's just look at a ver vertical tab and what that might look like. Whoops. And now we get uh, now we get this vertical tab and look at the spacing, changes it up a little bit. So these are special ASCII characters, and the 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 ASCII encoding knows what these mean and it knows how to properly uh, format your text or insert uh, text accordingly. It's inserting spaces, it's moving stuff around. It's using these things. So these are special characters. I want you to be familiar with them. Um, really, the only ones I would tell you to remember right now are probably new line and tab maybe. Um, and you can you can look up the others, but I want you to know that there are characters that allow you to do this type of formatting, things that you're used to doing. Uh, these, there are characters that will allow you to do that. And these will become pretty useful in what you are doing. All right. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what a vertical tab is. Yeah, it's it's, is I think it's going to insert uh, a fair number of new lines um, as well as as well as tab space. I'm pretty sure, um, but I'm not 100% sure what the default like amount is. Yeah. Knock this as see, I, I, my, my problem is I, I am a you know, I, I I'm all in on themes all the time. I change up my themes pretty often. Let me see this. Collect, oh, there's a collection. Mm, oh, I'm already liking this. Hold on. Ooh, let's see. Oh, so, all right. So my favorite theme, just because we're on the tangent now, is Monokai Pro. Now, you're supposed to, you're supposed to have to pay for this, um, which you should, but I think I used the Ristretto one. This is my favorite theme. I'm, I'm a huge Monokai fan. I don't know when I became a Monokai fan. Uh, probably back in my... Um, What's the other, what's the other uh, text editor called? Uh, Sublime, Sublime Days. Uh, I think I became a Monokai fan, but uh, yeah. My problem now is I wanna switch back to, I, I like that new theme. I had just found this theme. This theme is new to me. The, um, I forgot what we were using. A legendary, ooh, legendary dark high contrast. Nah, I don't wanna see that right now. Let's just, yeah, but switch it up, you know, Ch you know, change your change your mood. You know, sometimes it'll help you be more productive. Okay, so new line characters, tab characters, special characters. That's all I need you to know about that. But again, e everything that's not alphanumeric is a special character. Uh, to be honest, um, it's a character, so you know, don't uh, don't sweat it. But these will help out a lot. All right, escape characters. Escape characters allow you to insert illegal characters into a string. Proceeded with the backslash character, okay? So you might get a little confused here, especially because we just talked about special characters, but there are often times that you will need to enter uh, escape characters to allow you to insert legal characters. You you may have seen this before, uh, especially in something like Windows file path or any, any file paths at all uh, that have things like spaces in them and stuff like that. Uh, you, you, might see, you might see a backslash preceding that character. And so let's see what something like that might look like. I'm gonna type an example of needing, needing a focus on where the keys are. Characters. When y'all aren't looking, when, aren't, when y'all aren't looking, I've gotten myself up to around 60 words per minute in Type Racer. I'm a beast. When, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I started out at like 30 words without looking. I could do, I could always, <clears throat> I could always do, <clears throat> if I'm looking at the keyboard, I can probably type around uh, 70 words per minute. Um, so not crazy fast, but you know, I'm almost at my same, I've almost reached some parity. Um, now that I actually know where the keys are. And again, when y'all aren't looking, I'm, I'm a decent typist. I'm, a, I'm decent. I'm getting there. My goal, my goal is to, by the end of 2021, is to be up uh, at 85 words 
uh, pretty consistently. Um, but one, you know, within the next two years or so, I'm, you know, I'm breaking that hundred word limit. I'm breaking it. I'm definitely breaking it for sure. Okay. So example of needing special characters. So let's say we have a string. Um, oh no, no, not even a string. Let's just do a format dot. Well, it is a string format dot print line. Let's say we want to print something out really quick. Let's say we want to print out a sentence and I want to say, uh, don't let's say, I want to say, don't touch that. comma, that's my food. Actually, this is gonna work. Um, <clears throat> but let's say I wanna say something like this. This is going to be fine, okay? But notice what we have in here. Notice we have, um, notice we have some other quotes. We have some single quotes in here, all right? And this is fine for print line, but let's say I'm doing a print F and I wanna say something like, Format that print line. Actually, this is probably gonna work as well. Uh, she said, comma, that's my food too. All right, and so now I have double quotes inside of, inside of this, all right? I have a string that's supposed to print out, but I said, she said, that's my food too. That, you know, that's, that's proper, pronounced, pronunciation as proper, uh, uh, grammar, you know, you, I don't know, syntax, you know, you put the, you put the quotes around the thing that the person is actively speaking and that person's trying to say, that's my food too. And we're simply trying to show, express that the, this thing is happening here. Uh, and you know, I'm already getting errors, but I can't run it because it, it it's like, Hey, I don't know what these things are. Like these are illegal. I can't evaluate these inside of the string. Uh, it's, it's throwing everything off. This happens with lots of different characters. I'll show you a couple of different examples. But if we want to get those in here, we can backslash them to escape them. Um, and so this this escaping is going to change it. It's going to change the way that this is interpreted um, at, like as a system character or an actual character literal. Um, and so now if you should put the backslash in front of them, it's now going to uh, evaluate these things differently. And so I'm going to print this out now. And it's going to work and it's going to work with these quotes in here. So quotes is one of the biggest reasons why you might have to do this uh, in a string. Um, if you're doing any type of string formatting, there's a lot of different times when you might need to do this. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting for things like even, even in Linux, like let's say here, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a directory here called, uh, if I wanted to make a directory with a space from the command line, and I want to make a directory called like test directory. This is not going to work. This is going to make me two separate directories, one called test, one called directory. And if I try to get into one, it wouldn't work. So let's, let's look at this and we have a uh, directory and test. But if I want to make test directory, I'd have to, um, escape the space and this actually might work. Let's see. And check that out. Now it makes one called test directory because I escaped uh, the illegal character that wouldn't allow me to do what I was doing. Um, and it, it creates this directory with a space in it called test directory. So, uh, you might have you, you upfront, you probably won't have to use this often. Um, but escape characters are pretty important. You'll use these, like I said, it, it's, it's a thing that exists in more than just Golang. Uh, you have, you might have to do this in Python as well. So escape characters are nice and you just do it with a slash. If you want to interpret this thing, if it's causing, if this character is causing issues, you might have to escape it. All right. And you'll hear that a lot, regular expressions, much stuff, you know, did you escape that character? And the way that you get it out of there is, uh, is with the putting the backslash in front of it. So cool. This is an example of escape characters. Pretty useful. We're making great time. Um, all right, string literals. This is good. This one's good. I like this. So string literals, it is exactly what it is. All right, string literals are strings that should be interpreted exactly as they appear. Okay, exactly how they should appear. It's literal, it's the literal representation of a string. You might be saying, what in the world does that mean? I don't understand that. Let's do a little test test here. And actually we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna comment everything else out in this file. So what line is this? 21. Let's, uh, um,
what what's happening here normal mode what in, hold on oh it, okay so this theme is not great for maybe it's just my eyes this theme is not great for uh i couldn't see that this was highlighted uh i don't like uh, that's the problem i like i can see it i can definitely see it but i couldn't see it i was hitting shift v and i was like it's not working how it should work but okay that's fine all right so i'm gonna comment everything out really quick and uh we're gonna do example Let's do, uh, when I uncomment, this is gonna be a problem. Um, example of string literal. Okay, check this out. What if I try to do something like this? Format dot print line. Uh, what if I wanted multi-line string? So hello, my name is Aaron, comma. <coughs> Sorry. My name is Aaron and I could say, and I am the coolest person. And I put it like this because I wanted to, uh, and I, cause I wanted to print it out this way. I wanted it to print out exactly like this. And if I try to save it, check this out. I get new line and string, which is an error right here on line 24. It's a little common here. Unexpected new line coming from this, uh, new line and string, problematic, okay? It's not gonna let me run this. I cannot run this file. And it's because there's some new lines. We cannot represent a string this way. All right, we can't, we can't represent a string exactly like this in, in this way. The way that we would have to do this is to format it. I may be able to insert some new lines here, and it may help. It may help it out a little bit. Uh, and so, it still doesn't work. You can't represent this string like this the way that it is it is seen because there's still a new line character. Like when I hit enter here, there is a new line character there just that we cannot see. Uh, and so it's like, hey, you like, I don't like this. You can't do this. There's nothing wrong with your string besides that it has a giant new line character in it, a giant new space in it, and I, I can't do anything with that. Um, but sometimes you want to represent things like this. So one of the ways would be to use printf and put it in your new line characters and figure out how to do that. But sometimes that's difficult. The way that we can fix this is to print out um, what's called string literals, all right? Or, or you'll hear it called template literals. You'll hear it called a bunch of different things. And this is how we would do something like this. And in Go, it is, what is it, backticks? Um, let's see, whoops. Okay, yeah, it's backticks. It's one backtick. Uh, one backtick, I think, for a string literal. And I think, was it three for a template? Or maybe that's Python. I always forget the different syntax. One, uh, Veritas, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Good to have you. Also, thank you so much for the follow just a minute ago. Murphy, welcome. Sir Demir, welcome. JD, J Drambo, good to have you. MB Controller. Uh, Ilmento, or yeah, Il, Il, Ilmento, welcome as well. It's good to have you all. Welcome, good morning. Glad you're here with me on a Saturday. I appreciate it. Good to see you all. So here, what we just did is a string literal, template literal. Uh, and so it wants, it's saying, hey, express this literally how I'm showing this to you, okay? It's a string, give it to me exactly how I'm giving it to you. So it's interpreting all of those new line spaces and everything. And now I can, in fact, run this thing here. So, uh, you, you know, you, it didn't print exactly how we thought it was gonna print, but that's because there's a number of spaces and, and tabs and stuff all in here. And so this is how it comes out. It, you know, it didn't come out how you thought it was gonna come out but it is literally interpreting these things. Yeah, multi-line strings are, are are double quotes. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, and then template literal is triple, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that's actually, we'll hop in, we'll hop in and do all this. We're gonna do all this stuff in Python as well uh, in a second. So just want you to focus once through it and go, and then we'll hop in and do it in, with Python as well. So here we go. This will literally interpret whatever we stick in here. So, uh, so you might be saying, okay, what happens if you stick something like a new line character in there? How does it interpret that thing? Well, it is interpreting this literally. Okay, so that slash n will be seen as as a character. It's literally interpreting the string. It is an absolute interpretation of the string. Okay, so you can't insert things when you are doing things that way. Back ticks are on go. Again, I think we'll do this in Python in a second. And I think uh, let's do the double or triple. I like things like this are you're, the more and more languages you you do, you're gonna forget what's the actual syntax for it. It's okay. Uh, 
completely okay. All right, so literally look at the string. Also, again, you can't use your special characters and things like that. It's, it's gonna be the exact interpretation of what you input. And so uh, w when is this used? Again, it's, sometimes it's used for multi-line, um, for multi-line inputs, multi-line strings, when you want to, uh, like, especially if you were trying to, let's say you were, it may, it may not be, you may not care if it, if it, if you had specific uh, input that you wanted to paste here, like uh, when we did, we did an advent of code thing here. And uh, one of the first things we had to do was grab an entire list of these numbers. And if you pasted it in by default, uh, it would give you this gigantic, grossly formatted uh, long thing um, as a string, even though we were gonna split it up and do some cool things with it. But a, temp, a string literal will, uh, is good for formatting reasons. Like if you wanna actually make your input look good, um, it's good for if you are trying to, if you have weird uh, characters that you are trying to do some stuff with, it's helpful. It's helpful for working with text sometimes. Uh, yeah, it can be good for documentation as well if you want. I mean, that would be a little weird, but yeah, use the multi-line strings. Yeah, I mean, for, well, so so, so here's the thing. I'm, I'm a, Go documentation is amazing. So this right here, this that you're seeing in the standard library, the stuff that you see, the documentation that you get into uh, in here, not it well, not this stuff in particular, um, but the usage of these things, uh, it's all done, all of it. It's done via comments in the code, okay? It's not special documentation that's written over here. It is done via stuff, via via comments in the code, and it's pretty impressive. And so, you know, multi line strings just gotta be comments if you're doing it right. But yeah, you're right. String literal would be handy for printing out a poem. It would be handy for printing out a poem. You're absolutely correct. So string literal, literal representation of the string. We're gonna see this in Python as well, if you're looking for it. There are reserved words. I think in um, I think in Go, there are 25 maybe. And I think in Python, there are a little, like 35 maybe, um, but reserved words. There are simply some words that you, that you just can't use. This is not apply to strings. So that may sound pretty confusing, but you've seen us type in a couple different things. You've seen us type in things like uh, like main. And you've seen us type in things like var as keywords, okay? These are things that can't be used uh, outside of those contexts. These are reserved words. These are special keywords that you can only use, uh, that, that Go keeps reserved for the things that it needs to do. So you can find the list of these things. You can just, you know, you can Google list of uh, reserved words, Go. Uh, reserved words or Python. Let's look at both. Cause like I said, Python has a few more than Go does. Not a whole lot more. Um, let's see if there's a better printout of, of what they are. Go keywords. Here they go right here. And again, these are saved for different things. And you're basically going to learn you're gonna learn all of these uh, in in this in this course. You will learn what all of these keywords are, and it becomes pretty easy to not use these things. Uh, there's not a lot of situations where you would want to use them where there weren't strings. Notice I said not strings. This does not mean that I can't put the word break into a string. I can absolutely do that if I would like, um, because again, a string is used as a list of characters. So it doesn't really care about that. It's not interpreting this. A uh, Go is not interpreting this as something that it can use. It is simply uh, interpreting the list of characters. So it does not mean you cannot make these words into a string, but it means that you can't use these uh, words outside, outside of that context. You cannot call, I cannot make a function called break. Like I can't make a little tool or function called break uh, that will not work because I have to, I have to keep these reserved. So, um, these are just some of them. Things like th these are these are all tools to help you do stuff uh, throughout the language. You can see here, Pythons are different, and they have a few more. They have and and as and assert, uh, but they also have a lot of the same things like break. Um, there's there's also a lot of the same things that are just they do the same thing, but they are or they use for the same thing, but are different uh, keywords. But it's it's good to know what these are. Um, luckily, in Go, you won't be able to pop compile your code if you do accidentally use one of these things. Uh, you won't be able to compile your code. So you'll, you'll know right up front, Python, you will get an error during runtime and you'll have to, you know, do that. And so again, the, one of the 
biggest reasons for this. We haven't gotten to functions yet, uh, but when we get into functions and you're naming your function stuff, that's usually when people are running into it. I, I usually don't see people having any conflicts in using a Go keyword until we get to something where we are trying to like we're, we're we're trying to learn how to break out of a out of a loop and so we make a little function and people will be like yeah I'll just, I'll, I'll just call this function break and it's like no you can't do that i'm sorry um but yeah it just be familiar that there are keywords there are values that you can't use inside of your code pretty important um but also like not the end of the world like you're not gonna destroy anything by using it it's just gonna not work and you'll have to change the word and it should tell you it should tell you what you do which what you have to do uh, but yeah, there we go. Go to, I actually don't know what the go to keyword is. Let's see. Not to go to meeting. Uh, I've never, I've never used this. The go to statement programming language provides unconditional jump from the go to, to a labeled statement. Huh? Interesting. Um, that seems I've never used this. Oh, maybe this is why. Use of go-to statement is highly discouraged in any programming language. I was gonna say, I feel this feels weird. It becomes, it's difficult to trace. Makes sense, never use go-to. So you will not learn all of these. You will learn most of them because I've never seen this in my life. Now we know, we learned something new. E that's pretty easy to remember to me. Um, so it sounds like this is like a little, um, this is a a, a very, um, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's a very imperative statement to where your code goes next. And it, it allows you to send send your code, like send the logic elsewhere, like around another thing. Uh, yeah, I don't like that at all. Go to label three. Do you skip? Hmm. Okay, great. I, I yeah, this this is this is kind of gross. Oh, I actually need really to look at this example because I don't know. It's almost like a it's almost like a like Instead of like running a function, go to loop. So loop. Oh, this is dumb. I don't like this at all. So for a go to loop, skip iteration, go, go to loop. But that seems like it's going to. Okay, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, but it, I mean, I understand what it does, but I don't like it. So don't do. Don't use it. <laughs> uh, but a good question about go to. I I, I didn't even I, my mind didn't even see that on the list. You said it. And I was like. I didn't even see that on the list, but now we saw it on the list. Okay, cool. Let's move on. We're making really good progress. We're going to be able to get out of here. I think a little bit early. I hope we're still going to go through this stuff in Python as well. So don't, don't, don't trip. We'll just play around once we kind of uh, learn these things. One of the great things that you will use all the time, be a grown up here, uh, is to figure out how long something is. What is the length of something? So sometimes it's helpful to know how long a string is. This is not, this is not only apply to strings, but we will, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. This applies to collections. Remember string is a collection of characters. So we can see how, how many things are inside of that collection. Uh, so as we learn more about collections, we'll be using this exact same function, but we can do this by checking its length. This is very, very important. You will also, <laughs> I guarantee it. The, the moment you learn another language, you will forget <laughs> what the proper keyword is for length guaranteed to check it. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna check that right now. Length is a function uh, that we can use to check how long something is. So if we go back into our code, pretty simple. And we can actually go into the standard library in a second and look at these things as well. So like I said, I do want you to get a little bit comfortable looking at these things, but if we want to check the length of break, we've done, I think we did a little example here. We do L E N and we wrap that in quotes. I mean, uh, in uh, parentheses, and this will now, instead of printing out, instead of printing out the word break or the string break, it will now print out the length of break, how long break is. And again, if, you're, if you ever wanna know what a function does, you can usually put your mouse over it. But now when we print this out, we get five rather than the word break, okay? So, and why is it's counting each character, B, R, E, A, K. It will also count, it will also count spaces. These are characters here and it will be six. So when you see spaces and stuff, these are characters. Uh, these are ASCII characters. So don't, don't, don't sweat it. Don't be confused about it. But length is what allows you to do that. Now you might be saying, why is why, like, why do I have to put it in print line? Does it work if you don't do that? Yeah, it works. But 
remember, think about what you're doing. The, the code, um, actually, hmm, interesting. It's uh, evaluated, but not used. So yeah, so we're evaluating. This should work. I, th I thought that would work. Um, well, it shouldn't work, but in my mind, it would work uh, because this function, this function length, it is doing something. It is basically breaking down this thing that we have. It's, it's evaluating this collection and determining what number is there, and it's returning a value. Um, interesting, but I guess we need to either save it somewhere or print it out. The reason why it doesn't just print is because that that output is not a part of this length function. Uh, there's, there's no printing as a part of this. And so I guess we could, maybe we could save it to, uh, uh, how long? Not a variable called how long, maybe we could save it to a variable instead. And then, you know, then we could print that variable if we wanted to. Same thing, it's dumb. They want something like that, but it'll allow us to check and now how long we'll print six instead of anything else. I know you can't see it, it's over there, super weird. Let's see. What's up, J. Johnny's? <laughs> Johnny's, welcome, I did my best. Uh, Sierra Lee, welcome as well. Alex, the RR man. The R R yes R R man is pretty far from me. Zay XL, my glasses are also pretty terrible, y'all. Not gonna lie. Uh, Nick the Clicker, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow. Good to have you on a Saturday. All right, so length, pretty important. Will really help you. Uh, you'll use length a lot. You will use this length function a lot to determine how long something is. Any kind of collection. Remember we talked about arrays and slices a little bit. And so if you have a slice of thirty things and you want to know how many things are in there. Length will allow you to check out how many things are in there. Let's undo, let's get back to our str our string literal. Okay. And let's go to, what is happening? Example of length. And we'll do a format dot print line length. All right, cool, there we go. Gromit, what, oh, what is the, what was the colon equals? So remember, remember we talked about, if we click back on our file that we had from Monday, uh, remember, oh, this needs to go. Um, the colon equals is one of the ways that we declare strings. So, uh, no, not declare strings, that we declare variable. It's the shorthand for declaring a variable. Here is the long way to declare variable, you first, De you, you first declare the variable. So you set up, you tell the, you tell the compiler, Hey, I want you to hold some space in the memory for this thing called R string, but I have not given it a value. And then we give it a value. You can do that all in one line with the colon equals. So without having to do this piece, you can do this. And the difference here is that if you do colon equals, it will go, will infer the type. It'll, it'll do some type inferencing. Yep. It'll infer what kind of type it is. So you don't have to be explicit about the type. So, you know, just a couple of different ways of, of, of doing strings, um, or I'm saying strings, I'm doing variables of, in, of declaring variables, a couple of different ways to do it. And again, I call it the walrus operator. Um, cause it looks like a little walrus. I've heard it. So, someone else said it to me before and they specifically actually, so I think when they, they move from either Python two to Python three or a different version of Python three, they introduce a walrus operator. It doesn't do the same thing that it does here, but uh, they introduce a walrus operator. And I think in the documentation, they called it the walrus operator. And that is where I got it from because it was pretty interesting, but it looks like a little walrus. And that is why I call I refer to it as the walrus operator. If anyone knows of a proper term for it, let, let your boy know, I'll, I'll take it. But uh, still gonna call it the walrus operator because it's my favorite thing to call it. But that is what that is what that does. So it, it infers the type, but it allows you to both declare and assign a value to a variable at the same time. All right. So that's how you check how long something is. Uh, and particularly right now we're talking about strings because those are lists of characters. String formatting. Here's where we're going to go a little bit deeper. Um, and this is something that we have been using a lot but you haven't seen what it, like you haven't really under, I haven't explained what, what what's happening here. And so string formatting allows us to present our string exactly how we would like to. So similar of similar to a string, a template literal or a string literal where, you know, we want to display this in a certain way. Uh, string formatting allows us to have a lot of flexibility over the way this thing is done. 
And so this this is a thing in all languages. We are how to do it in Python as well. A little bit. So surprisingly, it's actually very similar to do it in Python as as it is in Go. Very similar, actually. Um, and so we'll see how that's used. So a couple of different things happen uh, when you can do this. One, uh, string formatting is the is allows for what's called uh, interpolation. All right. And so let's let's look let's look at what this means. So interpolation allows for variables to for, for the values of variables to be used uh, inside of a string. So if we, we have a string, it allows us to use a variable, the variable, and for the string to to uh, to interpolate its value, to use the value of that variable instead of the variable itself. So let's see. I called it the short declaration operator. That that's a good one too. That's definitely a good one. So let's do uh, some string formatting and let's say we set up a variable. So I'll set up a variable right now called, uh, again, name. And I'll use the walrus operator or the short declaration operator. And I will set it to my name. And now I can do a formatted string. How do I use this variable inside of my string? And so this is done with the printf function. Okay. And so print, you can think of print uh, LN as print line. So that is print a line, return me, uh, it returned to a new line at the end. Printf is for print formatting, okay? And so I can um, I, I can use these specifiers to, to format and figure out what I wanna do. Uh, I can work with data types, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, so printf does work if I don't do anything special. I can say, um, hello, my name is Aaron. And I'll add a new line at the end of here because I need to. And I'll comment out this line right here. And this will work. Uh, printf will still work even if I don't do any type of special formatting. It says, hello, my name is Aaron, right here at the bottom. Cool, great. But what printf allows us to do is to begin to set up this, this string in the way that I want it to be set up. So instead of saying Aaron, I can, I can do what's called interpolation. And so I can put a placeholder here. And so right now, I want you to always use percent V right, right now, just for right now. Um, I want you to always use percent V. So any place that you wanted to insert, insert a character uh, or insert a uh, variable, the value of a variable, I want you to use percent V. And I'll tell you what, the, what that is in a second. But so we can start out with this. And let, let me add the new line again just so there's a new line. I know that makes it more confusing. Just remember that that force, that backslash in is simply to insert a new line uh, and not for anything special besides inserting a new line uh, declared, but not, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't finish it. But what you do is you put a percent V in the place that you would like to use your variable. And then you say, hey, how does it know where, the, like what variable to use? After you finish the string, you close out the string, you put a comma, and then you type in the name of the variable that you want for to replace that value, okay? So this is how you do it with one with one thing. And so when I run this, it's going to replace percent %v with the value of whatever name is. So now it says, hello, my name is Aaron. You do this throughout the entire string. So you can use as many of these as you like. We've seen examples already of us using as many of these as we like. We can say, my name is Aaron and I am percent V years old. Okay, so let's say we had another variable that, that had my age. And my age is 30. To use the second one, again, we're just gonna do it in order. So the first percent V will be replaced by name because it's the first variable that is listed. And if I wanna fill in the second one, I enter an age. So name will get populated in the first one, age will get populated in the second one, okay? And it says, hello, my name is Aaron and I am 30 years old. So what's, what's, what's happening here, one, this is called interpolation. It is the, the, uh, the processing of these variables inside of a string, okay? And it's and insert, inserting that value. This is something that has to happen in every language. You will remember the word uh, because it's pretty important. Interpolation, that is what you're gonna be using if you want to uh, evaluate a variable inside of a string. 
Um, but string, but this, this string formatting allows us to do this, to do this pretty easily. This is kind of the preferred method for doing it. There are other ways to interpolate, but string formatting allows for this pretty easily uh, and setting this up in the way that you want to set it up. Uh, also, string formatting allows you to do some uh, specific things in terms of data types and structures, uh, and it allows you to, again, format your data and set up your set up your string and or print out the string. So you, you're, you're, you're printing it out, you're sending it to standard output in the format in which you want to uh, send it out as so you can use all your special characters in here, no problem. Things work really well, um, but it's pretty nice. It, you know, printf is used a lot, especially for stuff like this to get a lot of data, to do some cool things. Um, but this will get reinforced when we do it in Python. Uh, most of this other stuff will be easier in Python uh, or it'll, see, it'll feel easier. Uh, Python print statements uh, are, are, are almost like this. Python instead works like this. You do a print um, and you do an F and I could say, Hello, my name is, uh, instead of Aaron, you use these little uh, things. And I am years old. And then you do So this, this line at the bottom is, is what it kind of looks like in Python. And this is what it looks like in Go. So very similar. And the F here lets you know that it's a formatted string. Uh, and we're formatting it accordingly and we are inserting new values. Um, so yeah, so BPAS, yes, you can also do, uh, you can also stick the name of the, the, the thing here, but I don't think you can do that if you specified it as a formatted string, maybe you can. Um, so string, the printf uh, in Python, I think is uh, particularly relegated to Python 3, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think it's the new preferred way to do things, but yes, you can, like I said before, you can interpolate things in different ways. Interpolation isn't particularly string formatting only. Um, but yes, you are correct. You can also do that. We'll see examples of that when we get to Python as well, but just wanted to show you one way you can do that. And this will give you some insight on what we've been doing the whole time. Now you might be asking yourself, what in the world is the percent V Why are we using the percent V? Well, this is strictly typed. Uh, uh Golang is, has strict typing. And so uh, usually, usually compiled languages, uh, well, not compiled languages, statically typed languages don't do, uh, it doesn't try to figure out what data type something is for you. You have to be explicit about it. So uh, these are strings and it has a, uh, it has a, it has a value modifier to tell you exactly what this thing is. So I'm supposed to type in S or if this was a, uh, a digit, an integer, I could type in D and there's different ways for this to happen. When you see me type in percent %T, it is tell that is telling go to the, the, the formatter to evaluate the type rather than anything else. So it's telling it how to evaluate this uh this thing. The thing that I'm passing in is telling how to evaluate it. If I put an S, it'll you know it'll it'll still work. It'll evaluate as a string. I'll show you where you can go find that. Um uh but yeah, there we go. Aaron and I am so interestingly enough, check this out. The formatting, I, I wasn't even thinking about this. Uh the number 30 is a different this is a different data type. What is age? Age is not a string. Age is, it's an integer, okay? So when I try to do this and I add in a, 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 an S, it's trying to, it's basically saying, hey, I, you know, this is, I'm trying to do it, but this is an integer, okay? The integer is 30. And so really the data type for this would be D. I wasn't even thinking about that. Uh, in my mind, it was a it was a string. And now it prints out because I selected the correct data type, but this allows you to select some of those things. You do have to select the correct type V, we'll try to infer the type. The lowercase v will do its best. Uh, it won't always get it right. So be very clear about that. The, the lowercase v will not always get it right, but you can use it if you're unsure of what you're trying to do. Uh, it's a fairly safe bet, like especially starting out that you're not, if you're not doing anything complex, uh, the percent v will figure it out uh, for the most part for you. But uh, it, it does allow you to do different things with the data that you are passing into this formatted function. So yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely share everything. Share it all. Ah, yes, OMG Buster. Remember, we're we're working in Go right now. Uh, this is how you both declare a variable for it to be used and set its value. You might be thinking about Python. Python, you can just use the equals. Great. Uh, but in Go and in a lot of other languages, you can declare space for a variable. Uh, and then you can assign a value to it. So this is one way to do it. This is a way to do it uh, one way. Uh, another way that we could do it is var name string. 
name string and and name equals Aaron. So these two things are the same. Uh, this line right here and, and these two lines do the exact same thing. This is just shorthand. This is shorthand for this. All right. So you don't, so you, you must declare, you must tell the, you must tell the computer that I would like for you to set up space in the memory for this variable. And then you must assign that thing a value. And that's kind of how it works uh, here. That's also how it works in Python as well, but you do it all like you just automatically do it all in one line. Uh, Python, you actually can't declare a variable. Um, at least, at least I'm, I'm 99% sure you cannot declare a variable in Python, um, without giving it a value. Um, you, you have to give it an empty value, uh, but it, that is still declaring, that's still giving it a value. It's, it's giving it a zero, uh, a zero value rather than that. Oh yeah. Whoops. There we go. So these two things are, are the exact same thing. These two lines are equivalent to this line right here. Again, this first line infers type. So if you have something weird, um, if you have something weird up here, most of the time, again, it'll get the type right. But if you need it to be a specific type, if you need it to be a specific type, you cannot do it this way. You, you should do it this way. If you need something to be expressly a specific type, uh, you don't want to let the compiler infer it. You want to do this. Uh, are there constants? Yes, there are constants in Go. There are, there are constants in Go. Uh, they must be declared at the global level. Um, but yes, there are constants in Go. And a, a rune will be percent %R. I think a rune will be percent %R, but let's check it. Um, I gotta look at the, uh, let's go look at the formatter. I usually only go look at the formatter when I need to. I like, I don't always format. I can't remember if I've ever formatted a rune. Um, go fumt. And you can go look in, there's a couple different places that you can go look for it. Um, They'll, they'll all be here, which is the, the the printing verbs here. So you can see some stuff like this, print the type with the value, the value in default format. So that helps. Uh, where is a rune is an integer. So a rune probably could work. It probably could work as dash D. Um, but where are we seeing the R in here? Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think a uh, Unicode format. Let's see. Um, Let's see, let's see what we get when we do some of this stuff. Let's, uh, instead of this, let's make a uh, name. Let's make name just capital A. Uh, and so if I try to print this out, this is not gonna work or it'll work, but it's gonna give me some weird output for the first thing. It's gonna try to pass it in N32. So rune is probably a D. The reason why it's probably a D, well, this is probably gonna give the letter um, let's try, let's try, let's, let's see if it'll stringify it at all. No, it doesn't string it out. I don't know. Let's, let's see. Scientific strings and slices, integers in general. Actually, first off, let's see what we get when we print it out with a V. Let's see what the default format is for it. The default format is I'm assuming going to be an integer because rune is an alias for N32. Um, and yeah, so it gives us 65 instead of the letter a, um, I wonder if you would have to do something like, I don't know if you can do this, but nah, that's not going to work. Um, it's going to see it as a string. I don't know. I don't, I don't think R would, would work. I don't even know if R is a thing. Yes. Yeah, I'm even showing up. Interesting. I don't know. Couldn't you do see that character? Uh, maybe that might be it. Uh, yeah, so C, it looks like C works uh, for that. Not like <laughs> never had to do a rune like that. Let me see. C. Oh yeah, there we go. It's right there, and and it's in the integer piece exactly how it should have been. We were looking at an integer piece, but uh, yeah, there we go. Character represent, representing the corresponding Unicode code point. So yeah, and remember again, it's really important to remember that that those characters uh, are in fact represented by integers uh, through encoding, and that's through ASCII. Encoding is pretty interesting. I'm, I don't think we learned hexadecimal or anything in here, but uh, but yeah, encoding is pretty cool. Well, su encoding was super helpful for me to like, it like put everything together for me, like understanding, I'm like, man, y'all keep saying ones and zeros. How in the world does any of this other stuff happen? Encoding. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of different types of encoding. ASCII's only one type and it's only for, you know, the, the text that, you know, if you're, 
an English speaker, you're in the you're in the States or England or something like that, you know, this is the, the, the letters and text and things that you're used to, but uh, there are other encodings for other languages and, you know, it's pretty, pretty interesting. All right, that's string formatting. Um, and then, oh, we'll do iterations really quick and then we'll hop into string methods and then we're gonna do it all over again in Python, okay? Um, and all over again, we're just gonna go through some of the same things and see examples of messing with strings and playing around and we'll put them side by side and we'll understand the differences uh, between them. So iteration, strings are a collection of characters, missing word there. So strings are a collection of characters and collections in programming are zero index and iterable. I put zero index in there. We didn't need to know that right now, but uh, I, I, I did wanna put that there. They are zero indexed and iterable. Iterable simply means you can perform things to the, the, the objects in there repeatedly. You can force something repeatedly. That's what iteration is. And so collections of things uh, you can uh, basically move through. You can basically go from one item to the next item, to the next item, to the next item, to the next item, and you can perform tasks. So maybe we wanted to, uh, maybe there was a list of numbers. Maybe we had the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, all in a collection, all separate. We could iterate through those things and we could add 10 to each of those. So we could first go to one and we could add 10 to it. And now it's 11. And then we could go to two and add 10 to it. And now it's 12. And we can go, we can iterate through this entire list. We can repeat the process through this entire list. Um, so that's iteration. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you an example of this, uh, but they are all zero index as well. And so this is specific to some, there are languages that are not zero index. We looked this up last time. There were some obscure things uh, that were not zero index. Most languages, Python collections are zero index as well. Uh, what is zero indexing? So indexing uh, places a, a parameter on uh, the location of an object and it starts at zero rather than anything else. Okay, so let me draw something for you. So let's see if we can get it. Let's see if we can get it to draw a good uh, rectangle. You got to draw it really perfect for it to auto turn. Yeah, there we go. So let's say we had the word. Let's say we had the string. Hello. Yeah, there we go. So a collection. These all of these things are in a collection, and we're gonna we can we can put them down into these little uh, these little cells. But what ends up happening is, you know, we got the we got the H in here, E, L, L, O. We can we can describe these things by their places. We can refer to these letters by their places. We can refer to the items in this collection. Uh, by their place, but it starts at zero. So if we wanted to look for uh, the letter L, this is actually in the, so it's a zero, one, two, three, and four. So although there are five, the length of hello is five. So we use that word again, length. The length of hello is five. Uh, there, uh, the, the representation, the index value only goes up to four. Starts at zero, one, two, three, and four. So if we ever wanted to get that first L or an L period, we could refer to it as, don't worry about this notation, but we could refer to the second item, the second item in hello. And the, the, the thing that's in the, it's, in the, it's not the second item, sorry. Let me, let's be clear about this. It's not the second item. The thing that is in the uh, the second index, uh, the number two index, it, uh, it, it it is actually the third item in the list. So. You know, anything that's zero index, if you're looking for something, it's going to be the length minus one for that thing. Uh, it's gonna be minus its location, where its real location as you're used to it, but everything starts at zero. So the first item in the list is always gonna be zero. So if we wanted to get H, we would call hello zero. And so we can actually see that in, let's go to the playground and let's make this larger. And I can say, I can set up a variable here and I can say X equals, hello. I also want you to see what's gonna come out of this. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. And if I try to print out X, I'm gonna get hello. So great, I'm gonna get hello. But if I try to print out X and I use something called, this is called bracket 
notation, okay? Bracket notation is generally how you're going to refer to the index of an item uh, in, in pretty much any language. If I look for X zero, okay? That's gonna be me trying to refer to the first item in, a in, in this collection. X is the collection and the thing that's in the brackets is the index of the thing that I want to have back. So if I only wanna print out H, I would run this. And you might say, oh my gosh, that's not what I was expecting is 72. Well, what is 72? You know, let's look at that ASCII table. And we look at number, whoops. We look at number 72 and look at that. Isn't that a capital H? Yes, it is a capital H. And you might be saying, oh, well like, okay, but how do I, how do I, I wanted to print out H. Well, I think there's another slide in here in a second uh, on like casting and coercion. There isn't, but we we can do things like, uh, we can actually cast this to a string. If you're like, hey, I really wanted this to be a string, there's some things I can do. Like I can literally type in the string function here and run it and it will instead give us the H. We'll, we'll dive deeper into casting and coercion a little bit, um, but yeah, into casting. Um, and so it will print out the H there, but I wanted to print out the last thing in there. So the O is zero, one, two, three, four. And that will print out the O. Oh, what if I try to do something that doesn't exist? There are five characters here, uh, but there, but it's zero index. If I try to call a number that doesn't exist, it will fail. It will call it, cause an error. Index out of range. Can't do that. Why? Because uh, it has a length of five, but it, uh, but you know, there's nothing in the five index spot, so it does get an error at runtime. Uh, Nam Labs, yes, Fumpt, FMT is the go standard library package that allows for um that allows for formatted input and output uh, so it allows you to print things it's the package that allows you to uh, print things to standard output it allows you to do a lot of different things actually but uh it's the it's the package needed to be able to print stuff out uh it's pretty much it's, it's very common you're going to import it into just about everything that you ever do thing from is basically another code file that has all the functions we're using correct uh, that's why it has to be imported at the top. Yeah, but it is part of the standard library though. So th this is not some type of outside thing that someone else is using. Uh, it, it is Go, it is part of the Go standard library. It's so part of the main Go code base, a uh, code base that allows us to do all the cool things. Um, Like object that you call with a collection of methods. Uh, Yes, it's, yes, a singleton like object uh, that you call with a collection of methods, yes. Yes, it, it, you call it, you call it, it has a bunch of functions, which we call methods and that are attached to it that we call, that we can use for a bunch of stuff. So yes. Um, is frontline technically a method of FUMPT? Yes, BPEZ, it is. It is a method of the format package or the FUMPT package. Anonymous Gifter, thank you so much for the, helping us with the war on ads. I love it, I appreciate it. Um, also, Nam Labs, thank you so much for the follow. Um, also, what's that? Uh, Llama Kid, 29, love the name. Dark Honor, good to have you as well. Good to see you all. Um, Mab House, GT, welcome. Random 4R, welcome. Turbo Smol 94 welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follows. Good to have you all. People just coming in, I love it. I appreciate it. Is it possible to write anything in Go without importing any packages? Uh, let's see, that's a good question, actually. Um, you won't get any yes, probably, but you won't get any output. Um, maybe. Uh, let's see. Like, I could probably do this. I could do, I'm going to remove this import. And I could write, you know, yeah, you can write like five plus seven, I think. Maybe this works. I don't know. That's a good question. Evaluated, but not used. Huh, maybe not. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I could do like, hold on, maybe I could do like, uh, no, cause then I would have to use X. Um, what if you return it? So this is the main function. Um, I don't think, I mean, maybe, maybe. That's a good question. Yeah, unexpected literal. Oh, well, actually I spelled return wrong. Too many arguments to return. Um, yeah, once, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is a good question. That is a really good question. Um, without importing anything, I'm trying to think right now. So let me add some stuff together. Um, because if I declare a variable, 
I could, uh, let me try. Okay, let's set my name equal to Aaron. Nope, because that, never mind. It's my, the, the first thing I thought of, I was about to import the strings package. I don't know if anyone can think of, if anyone can, I, right now off the top of my head, no, I can't think of, I can't think of a way to, uh, mate, well, so maybe, yeah, I, you might be right. Actually, maybe if we write another function, uh, called like add, um, um, uh, returns an int, um, can we just, whoops, 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 hold on. This is not my editor. I forgot I'm not using Vim. Uh, maybe if we just return X plus Y and we simply call add with five and six, close this out. Maybe, maybe this will work. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. We did it. Woo! <laughs> we we did it. We didn't import anything. This code runs. So this this, this code works. Uh, um, it, it it did it, it it actually did the processing. It did the processing in the background. Uh, but we didn't import any package to do anything with it. Uh, so it kind of just gets gobbled up in the runtime. So it, it runs. It processes this, but we're not doing anything with it. So we don't know what it is. We don't. Yeah, we we didn't do anything with it. So like, if you want to to see to make sure that it is working right. And I put it all in the print just so we can see it. Just to make sure it is in fact running properly. Oh, I have to, I have to, yeah, okay. What? Oh, format dot. And format, and it's gonna import it for me automatically. And it works. So yes, we did, we did run it. <laughs> but we did run it without having to import something. So, okay. I was like, hmm, I wonder if that, if that will work. Yeah, so you can write a function and call the function, I guess, and if there's no, there's nothing you're using. So yes, you can, you can do that. Wow, that was much more difficult to think of than I expected right up front. Um, okay, now iteration. I want, I want to present you this concept of iteration, but we're not gonna dive too deep into it because we're gonna spend a bunch of time learning about loops and understanding how to go over some, how to, how to go over something. So um, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. Um, and so really quick, um, I'm, gonna mm, I'm gonna create a new file here. I'm gonna create a new file because I think this topic is a little different. Iteration.go and let's, let's do something in here really quick. So package. Package main, wow, main, and let's get down here and let's go funk, main, and let's do something like this. The the, the variable is gonna be x, and x is going to be, this is an example. And remember I said we can, we can for collections and we're, we're iterating, we can do something to them over and over again. Don't worry about this. I'm gonna use what's called a for loop, um, let's see the easiest way for comma I equals range, uh, X that might need to go in, um, format dot print line or prints line. Let's go ahead and print out I. Okay. Two problems is that my range might not be right. Uh, oh no, that mean that looks like it might be okay. All right, so I'm gonna run it real quick just to see, and then I'll explain it to you if it works. Um, I usually don't use range, but I figured I'd use range to switch it up because I think the other the other format that I can write this in is going to really throw you for a loop. Oh, you like that pun? It'll throw you for a loop. I like that. But uh, <laughs> okay. So check this out for a second. Uh, so it did work. Uh, let me let me fix this. Make it easier for you. All right, there we go. Oh, 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 I'm missing something. I was like, no, I, I did one thing and it broke it. There we go. Okay, let's talk about this. What is happening here? We said these are iterable, okay? We can go through and do something to these. What I did was create something called a loop. A loop is a piece of code that's going to, uh, that's going to perform a, another piece of code over and over again for a, for, for a, an amount of time or for a situation that you specify. So um, 
So right now, don't worry about this line. It's basically saying for for everything, for all the letters that are in the collection X. For, so for every letter that's in this string, go ahead and do this thing. And it's gonna, and it's gonna perform this task, move on to the next one, perform this task, move on to the next one, perform this task, move on to the next one. What is the task that's performing? Well, the task is performing is simply to print out that letter. Um, and so the I is actually a little placeholder for every time I move to the next one. It's gonna keep an account. It's gonna keeping a track of where I am as I'm moving through this string. And so it's printing out everything individually. T, then I, H, then I, then S, then a space, then the I. And so this is an example. It prints it out one by one. We were able to go through this collection one by one. This would also work. Remember, we can do this with strings, so it might be weird, but again, even if you're thinking about something like a slice, we did a little bit with slices before, we'll dive way deeper into slices, and we'll say, you know, another one, y equals a collection of int, and we'll say five comma four comma 78 comma 99 comma 101. And we wanted to print that out instead, so it works with the collections, uh, x is undefined, oh. All right, whoa. What happened here? What, hold on, what, what is that? Oh, cause I stringified it. Okay, I was like, man, what, what happened there? Okay, that was weird. That threw me all the way off. And if we print this out, it prints out each number. So that's a collection, it goes through one by one and it prints out each thing. Don't worry about the for loop right now. That's not the focus of this. Uh, the understand iteration, it went, th it went through this, performed a task, and it kept going through it. It, it processed something over and over, okay? Um, and that's what iteration allows you to do. It allows you to move through these collections uh, to perform certain tasks. You will do iterations all the time. A control shift, I think, it, so I actually think it's just control tilde. Um, I think it's just I think it's just control tilde to get the terminal come up or you can type in terminal new terminal and that will bring up a new terminal at the bottom okay but control tilde I think is what it is yeah control tilde or terminal new terminal if you're trying to do it oh and it says it does say control shift and, oh that is a new one uh just control tilde just shows and hides the same one so if you do control shift every time it's going to bring up a brand new one every time uh, which is what you may not want. I, I want to keep working on the same one. So it's just control tilde. Unfortunately on my keyboard, that takes three key presses as well. Um, unfortunately, but yeah. So that's a little bit about iteration. And again, also zero index. If I was trying to, um, you know, this is a collection of things. The, the first item in this collection is at the zero space. Uh, so just be very clear about that. So there are one, two, three, four, five things here. But if I was trying to get the third thing, this is the number two index, not Three. That's how you get. That's how you get there. Um, so that's a little bit about iteration. And the last thing we're gonna do uh, in Go specifically is string methods, uh, really quick. So we're gonna go back to our old file to do this to our strings.go file. And now we're gonna do string methods. These are the most fun parts of strings. Okay, like not the most fun. Well, yeah, they're the most useful things about strings. You will use string methods often, most likely to do all kinds of things. Words and phrases are essential to the things that we do every day. You will have to deal with strings often. You're gonna need to know how to uh, how to operate with them and know what's going on with them pretty often. And so let's also, let's come out all the way down to, let's come out all this stuff still. And let's, uh, man, what is, All right, so here is string method. Okay, what is a string method? What is a method? Period. This is where this is where learning can't be um, is where it's difficult for learning to be linear. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something that you're going to learn later. We're gonna we're gonna I'm going to introduce you a little bit to something you're going to learn later, so that you can learn how to manage these strings a little bit better and how you can work with these strings a little bit better. Methods. Methods are simply functions that apply to, so Go is classless, but for most people, especially when we're talking about Python, uh, basically they're, they, are, they are functions that can uh, that act upon a class. 
um, or, or in this case, it's going to be our, through our packages. They are, they're all called methods, uh, but there's, there's no class, uh, here, but what, what one, a function is just a little reusable piece of code that you can use. So every time you see those parentheses that we're using, every time you see, uh, any type of parentheses, we are using, uh, we're calling a function. So even print line, print line is what's called a method. And it's a method of the format package, the font package. Okay. And so there is a strings package as well. And it's a part of the Go standard library and any of the cool tools that we can use, any of the cool tools that are available. And we're going to look at those, uh, are, are methods that allow us to do some, some cool things, allow the tools that, that we can use. Uh, there's just functions that are attached to these things. Um, and string methods are functions that you can perform on strings. Okay. So they specifically work on strings and they allow us to do some pretty cool stuff. Let's go look at the strings. All right, the way that you get it is import strings. So instead of import fumpt, we do import strings or also do import strings. All right. And now here are all of those methods that we can use. And again, looking at this right up front, you're like, man, that I don't know what all this stuff is, but this is why we're going to get introduced to some of them. And then you'll know where to go when you might want to find something. You're saying, Hey, I don't know if I can do this thing. Let me look through the list. But these things, let's look at some of the, the more fun ones. Let's, let's do a uh, two upper a common one that you might have to do or two lower. What does the function two upper do? It says, Hey, two upper returns S with all Unicode characters mapped to their upper case. All right. You might be saying what is returning S and it's, it's referring to the example up here. Don't you're not going to fully understand the example yet because we haven't done anything, but it does give you an example down here. Okay, so you, there's an example here. You can simply click run and it will run this for you right here and take a look at this. Uh, we've kind of already seen a setup like this. What are they doing? They're doing a format.print line. So they are printing out something to standard output. They're not calling the strings package. So that's the what we imported strings dot two upper. So this is the, this is the, whoops. This is a tool that we're trying to use right now. They're passing in the word gopher. They're passing in the string gopher. Remember a string method is a, is a function that can be applied to a string. So you must pass in a string here and notice how the G is capitalized, but all the rest of the letters are not capitalized. But then when it prints it out, everything's capitalized. Okay. So the two upper function will capitalize all the things for you. That sounds fun, right? You know, Hey, you know, we just capitalize all of our letters. Really nice. I can put some other things in here, like whatever I put in here and I run it, it's going to capitalize all of it. That's what the two upper function does. And these are the fun parts of coding. These, these tools, these methods uh, allow you to do some pretty fun things. So that's one we will, we'll, we'll, let's actually take, let's actually take this exact thing so we can be lazy and let's paste that right here and I'll put uppercase all and we can put an example like this and that will simply print out everything in uppercase but this is a good place to go again i'll if you want to get to the strings package and go here and you can click around and you can see examples for different things and so there's things like to title so what's to title to title returns a copy of the string s that's what passed into it with all Unicode characters mapped to their Unicode title case. What does title case mean? Well, let's take a look at an example. A title case, uh, I'm pretty sure title case simply uh, capitalizes the first letter of each word. And so you can look at one of the examples here, compare this example to the title example. And, oh, is there just a title one? Oh, okay, title, okay. I'll, I'll talk to you about the differences of that in a second. So we'll run this and let's take a look at the output and see it. Oh, interesting. This is not what I thought it was going to do to the title case. Uh, so I guess this is also like to upper, um, I actually don't know. That's not what I expected it to do. Uh, let me see title. Let me run this one. Hmm. I don't think I, so I think in uh, Python, I don't think title does this. I think Python has something like this, uh, but I don't think it does the same thing. I actually don't know, I guess Unicode title case. So I guess, I guess 
a Unicode uppercase, everything doesn't have a map. And I, I think that's why they threw in, they threw in these, spe, uh, these kind of special characters here. Um, maybe everything doesn't have a map to an uppercase. Uh, maybe their title case can be different from what's considered to be uppercase. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, but there's a lot of cool different things in here. That's Russian for bread. I, man, look, this is great. This is, this is phenomenal. This, uh, I love, like, this is great. I'm going to use that one day. I'm going to tell somebody that I know that that's Russian for bread. I'm going to tell somebody. Sounds like Hleb. Okay. I'm with it. I'm smarter today than I was. I'm smarter now than I was 10 minutes ago. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, there are a bunch of different things here. There's trim function. So maybe you have a bunch of white space. Maybe you have a, a, a string literal or something. Maybe you have a string that has a bunch of white space. You can trim all the space from it. The trim space from the left, the white space from the right. You can trim all the, all of the, um, new line characters and stuff. You have all kinds of stuff in here. You have to lower, so you can lowercase everything as well. You can split. Split is a really good one. Split is one that you will use. Um, let's, let's, let's see how you use split really quick. Split allows you to one, let's fix this. Let's go example split is great. Let's say I have a, let's say I have a string, which is S uh, and I set that to the value of, um, Why are we here? Okay, what split does, and so I'm gonna explain it to you, and then I'm gonna show you how you can look at the documentation to understand what this does. Everything in code, for the most part, is input and output. You pass something in, you get something out. All right, that's mostly what it is. That's what these functions are. That's what these string methods are. You give it some input, it does some processing, and it gives you something back to make things a little bit easier for you. What split does, what the split function does, is it takes in a string. So all these, all of these take in a string. They, they take in a string as input. And what it does is it takes it and it splits up the string wherever you want it to be split up at. So whatever you want it to separate this thing on, uh, you tell it, hey, uh, here's, the, here's the string as input. Here is the character that I would like you to split this uh, thing on. And everywhere you see one of these things, you will create a new thing out of it. And instead of giving me back a single string, it will return back to me a collection of strings. So a slice of strings, it'll give me back a collection of strings. So if I want to split this up on the spaces, uh, it'll, so it'll give me like a collection of these things with that item removed. So let me, let me use it really quick. And let's say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assigned it to a new value. So S split is equal to, uh, strings dot split and you give it S is the, is the string that's passed in. So that's the first piece of the input. Second piece of the input is what you want to split it on. And I wanted to split it up on spaces. Okay. And I'm going to format dot print line S split. Okay. So it takes in a string. It gives me back a collection of strings. Okay. And when I run this, What it has here is you can see the you can see that those uh, brackets are there. It's a collection of strings. Um, it is a collection of strings, uh, and so split it up on the Y, the R, the we, and the here, and it actually removed those spaces. I could also split it up on capital W. What happens if I split it up on capital W? What are we gonna get? We're gonna get some weird stuff. Why? Because we have two capital Ws. So it's gonna split it here, remove it. So we're gonna get one thing. We're gonna get H Y space R space. And then we're gonna get a second thing at, it's gonna remove the W and then we're gonna get E space here. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna split up the string on those things there. And let's see what that looks like. It's gonna be super odd. And there are two items here. They're two separate items and it's split on those things. So again, just a, a cool way to work with strings. A lot of these tools you're gonna have to play around with. All the coding challenges, all the different things we're gonna look at uh, that you're gonna get, uh, they all like, it's stuff like this is a part of them. Even in the real world, splitting strings is very, very important. You will split strings and you will uh, manage and manipulate strings very often. But let's look at how split works 
and and see how we can understand how it uh, how it works. So a function in Go, we're gonna get here. So again, this is just an introductory thing. We will spend time doing this thing specifically. Uh, it gives you an example of what the function is. This is actually what the split function looks like. And so it says, hey, I'm calling a function called split. And then I have these parentheses here. Let's look at our code really quick. And let's look at things like the main function, which we've been running. This is how a function works. A function is a reusable piece of code. It's a little package of reusable piece of code. And whenever you see uh, these parentheses, you should think function, but it can take in data and it can export data. The things that are inside of the parentheses are what are what it takes in, okay? So this split function, we're calling the split function. We called it when we ran it right here, dot split, we're calling it. And then there are parentheses and we're passing in two things. How do you know what you have to pass in? It's telling you, you have to pass in S and you have to um, pass in what you wanna separate with. So we passed in the W as the separator, the, the string is S, the separator is the W and it's going and it tells us what it's going to give us back. So what's inside of the parentheses are what you're going to pass into this function and what's outside of it is what you're going to get back. So we, we gave it a string and a separator and it gave us back a collection of strings. It gave us back a slice of strings. I know it can be confusing, but that's how you can kind of see it. So as you go through, you can see, okay, I see S and sep. So I, I know here I need to pass in two things as well. Whenever you see a comma, that's just is telling you that there's another option you have to pass in. Uh, so, you know, here, look at this, there are, there are two commas. So I got to pass in, so split after, I don't know how to use it yet. I, I do not know how to use it, but you don't know how to use it yet. And you can say, okay, but I can see that I pass in three things. I need to pass in S, I need to pass in a separator, which is a string. I need to pass in an N, which is an integer. So this function takes three things instead of two things, but it also, it gives me back a collection of strings. So this is just how you would read it. Again, just want to introduce you to it. Not a, not a huge deal. All right. There are a bunch of these. One of the assignments that, you, that you're gonna get is to go through and try, uh, just simply try uh, to print an example of five of these different things that we haven't touched yet. Uh, see if you can get it to work. Um, so I think you'll get hands on with this a little bit, but these are pretty cool. Let's go through real fast, real fast, and do these things in Python because um, it's important to know uh, this stuff as well. So this, these are things that, uh, all the things we've done today, um, because we're talking about a specific data type, we're what we are doing today is learning how to uh, get familiar with and work with a very specific data type, that data type being strings. There are lots of different data types, but that matters much more in a language like Go that is strictly typed. Uh, Python is gonna allow us a little more flexibility. Um, it's gonna allow us a lot more flexibility, especially like, check this out. Something you haven't seen yet. Actually, this might work in Go. I don't think it works in Go. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things that you just don't try. So let's find out. Uh, let's go back to the Go Playground really quick. And what if I try to do hello? What was happening? I try to do hello playground, print hello playground times five. This might work. Um, and I try to run this. It does not work. Uh, missing. Hello playground, non-declaration statement outside of function body. Missing function body. Did I remove something? Hold on, let me remember. That's not the that's not the error I would have expected. Uh, I think I delete, I think I deleted something. Let's try to run it. Yeah, cool. Mismatch types. You can't multiply hello playground times five uh, because these are two different types. It doesn't know how to work with them together. It's a string and an, and an integer. Okay, it doesn't know how to work with them together. But Python. If I drop into the Python interpreter really quick, where I just go into Python three and I do, whoops. And I do hello world times five, it works. Uh, it actually does that and it prints out hello world five times. It, it replicates this five times. Uh, and so the concepts that we just did, uh, again, some of them are very specific to how a a language that is statically typed will work. Some of the things that we did specifically um, are, are are only apply to, to that. And that's why we separated it by doing all that all together. Now let's do the same concepts. We're gonna uncomment all this. Let's do those same concepts really quick. Oh. Let's do these same concepts really quick in Python really quick. So we're gonna create 
this. Let's delete this. And let's make another one. And we'll call this um, strings.python. Strings.py. It's a brand new file. Strings.py. And we'll do some of the same things that we learned. So one, we got an example of a string right at the top. Whoa, what is, what is something that's weird about the, um, the Vim inputs here. Like it's not changing modes in the way that it's supposed to. So Python, the, um, the character to implement a comment is a, is a, a pound or a hashtag, whatever you want to call it. So example of a string and in Python, you know, name equals Aaron. So same things, think single quotes, think double quotes, but also, yeah, so in Python, it is single and double quotes. So you can see here, both of these do work in Python. And it tells you the type here is a string. So Python, that does work. Uh, that is not how you do runes or characters. Python, <clears throat> and a lot of, and actually a lot of, um, a couple, probably lo most of the major, well, not most of the major. The, uh, the character data type, so runes, or a character data type is not a thing in Python. There is no character data type in Python. The way that you specify a singular letter is to make it a one character string. Uh, so there, there are no character data types here. Um, and so we will just put a string here. <clears throat> and that is the way that you declare a variable here. Um, so there is no rune, so we can't, we can't um, do that. So if we put example of a rune, We'll put not possible. No character type in Python. Okay. Um, what else do we what else do we learn and that do we go through? Special characters, escape characters. Uh similar thing here. Um we'll say X equals what do we do here? Uh, she said, comma, that's, oh, there we go. That's my food and like this. So we would think that would work. And if we try to print out X, obviously, well, not obviously, you can see that the text editor colors are kind of weird and like, that it doesn't look like it's quite right, which is true. Come on. And if we run Python, strings.py, uh, not, man, Python three. I really need to set that alias up. And we run it, it says, hey, invalid syntax. I don't like what you did here. I don't know what that is. And it's showing me where it's, it, the problem is starting. It's showing it at line six and right here at the T. And so again, same thing, we can escape those characters here. So we can put that there. We probably don't need to do that one, but I'll check in a second because there's only one of them. And we escape both of those things like this. Save it. And now it works. She said, that's my food, except for, uh, yeah, yeah, we want, we want both of those things in there. So that is escape characters. Right there, so same thing. The the backslashes work exactly the same way here in both languages. So there, this you can start to see that the concepts of when you're learning one language, most of the concepts, most of the concepts flow through, most of them. <clears throat> That's why we are focusing on the language that has more concepts, because if you learn more concepts, it's easier to flow down, uh, flow to something that has less rules, less of the structure that, uh, that you've already learned. Um, a lot, it's going to be a lot easier for you to move around once you kind of get a grasp of things over here. So that's special characters, uh, string literals or template literals. Um, you can also interpolate in template literals as well in Python. So let's see. Example of string literal. Uh, so this would be something like our literal is equal to, uh, I think you can do three. Is it three of these? Or is it, I'll, I'll look it up in a second. Uh, I think it's three of these and we can say this is an example of a string 
literal in Python. All right, we'll do something like this and let's print that out. So print. Oh, whoops, hold on first. Uh, end of line. There we go. All right, and we can see our little right here. Um, what is this? And we try to print that out. <clears throat> it does print out, you know, with some weird spaces and stuff, but it is a template literal here. So the three, the three um, quotation marks will allow us to set that up that way to have a literal representation of our string and our text. Um, yeah, so pretty simple, pretty simple. Um, it looks very, again, very similar, but it's just different characters. So this same concept applies to both languages, but uh, it's a little bit different in that over here in Go, you're gonna use backticks instead of, where's that at? Oh yeah, you're gonna use backticks instead of the triple uh, quotation marks, okay? <clears throat> length, length works the same way as, you can also check the length of things, uh, but it works a little differently in Python. Um, length is, well, so let's see. I, I think it works differently. Maybe it doesn't. Um, example, and like I told you, I always forget length depending on the language that we're in. I, JavaScript, you check it one way. Python, you check it one way. There's some uh, Go, you check it one way. There's some overlap into being the same way, but um, you never remember which one is which. Um, so, okay, it also is the length function as well. Uh, so example of checking length. Um, and so we can do again, uh, S equals, we have no idea how many letters are in this, <clears throat> but if we want to do, if we want to do that, we can do a print length of S and this will give us how many things are in there. So there are 67 characters inside of the collection S. So length, same way, that's nice. Uh, and JavaScript, I think it's, uh, let's see, do I have a note on here? Uh, <clears throat> oh, okay. In JavaScript, I think it's dot lane, uh, dot length. Um, so you like, <clears throat> what's actually, See this really quick, and so it's a it's a it's a method on the it's a it's a string method that you actually call uh, that function on directly. So we do like something like node. So now we're on a whole new language now. We're now we're on JavaScript and JavaScript same way. I can say uh, let x equal all of this stuff, and so let is is similar to var, um, and then uh, and then I can say x is the name of the thing and I can type in length and call a function on it and what is it it's string dot oh oh actually was it string dot length x or is it I don't see I never remember uh no no it should be x dot length type error undefined x length is not a function I don't know I don't know I haven't done I haven't done JavaScript in a while but yeah, again, you always forget to type it. I'll just Google it every single time. Every single time I just Google it. Um, how do you check length up in, um, check, that seems right. No, that seems right in JavaScript, but it might have to do with the way I'm doing it via the interpreter. Um, yeah, oh, 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 and there's no quotes. That makes sense. That, 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 not no quotes. There are no, um, no parens. That makes sense. That makes sense. And it'll check it that way. Uh, so different ways, different languages, mostly these two ways though, it's mostly either this or or len uh, as the function uh, and the keyword might be different. It might be this, but be len. So it's just, it's, <laughs> I'm, you will you will forget what length, over time you will forget what length is in this particular language if, as you learn more, 100%, like th they do it different ways. Um, but yeah, just a couple different ways to check it, but you can do it in Python. We see how to do it in Python. It looks like it's the same way as Go. So even more similar than you thought right up front, string formatting. Uh, example of string formatting. And so an example of string formatting uh, kind of works exactly the same way. Let's do name. We already have name up top, but it's okay because it's a variable. We can change it. Um, 
And so name is now equal to Aaron. Oh, I got to change that. I got to be able to tap out of that. Age equals 30. And instead, we can do this in a couple different ways, but string formatting works like this. Print, same print statement, but you put an F in the front and we can say, hello. My name is, and like I said, you do this and I am, these are the placeholders. So instead of the percent V, we don't care about type. These are the placeholders for us. Years old. And those are the placeholders for us. Uh, and we can simply put in, I think we, I think we can actually put it inside of there. I'm not sure, but let's see. Name, comma, age. This feels like it will work. Nope, not node. That's not what I want. And empty expression, not declared. Oh, so you actually put them inside. Okay, I thought it was the same, but I guess it's not. This feels empty expression. So I guess you gotta put them inside. Name, age, let's try that. Yeah, okay, so you stick them inside, so a little bit easier. Uh, I thought you, I, I really thought you put them behind, but okay, that is, uh, there we go. So another string formatting thing, not a big deal. Um, just two different ways to do it, but kind of similar. Uh, placeholders, you just put in the name of the thing that you wanna interpolate right inside of there. And so again, remember, this is interpolation. This is not specifically string formatting. There are other cool things in the string formatting that you can do, like adding those characters and all, all the things that you that we did before. Uh, you can add all of those things in there. Um, and Python 3, there are three ways. Okay, uh, there are three ways to check length or there are three ways to format text. Uh, I think there are three ways to format text. I think there are a couple different ways to interpolate as well. Let's see. Um, let's see, example string formatting and then string methods. So Python has a bunch of these as well. So W3 schools is going to be the place that you wanna be for all of your Python stuff. Uh, to be honest, it's really interesting. Um, huh. I, had, I had an Insta, I didn't even know, I, I, well, I know that I have an Instagram, but I didn't know that I had an Instagram command. Uh, great. Yes, follow me on Insta. All right. Uh, but W3 Schools has a lot of the, a lot of cool things here. Um, easily, it's got a lot of cool examples and easy things to follow as opposed to Go. I think that I think that the Go by example page is only useful. Not it is is only really useful if you already really understand what you're doing. Like I I love these uh, language by example pages, and this is something I shared with you before. Um, but like, these are only good if you already kind of understand what's happening, uh, or else I think it's a little overwhelming uh, with the way that they write things, but but it's good. W3Schools, on the other hand, I find uh, has the same thing. It gives you a bunch of examples, but it gives them to you in a more uh, practical and easier to read format. Um, and so there are a ton of, in Python, there are a bunch of, um, there are a bunch of string methods, and I think if you just Google Python string methods, but they have a lot of the same thing. They have like two upper and two lower, and um, and all of the cool things. So you know, capitalize. So capitalize the first character, and it tells you right up front what it does. Um, so you don't have to search through the documentation quite as hard. Uh, is it you can check if it's a lower case character or if it's a number. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of nice, and so we can we can learn how to use those really quick. And it also has stuff like split. Um, where is split? It also has like split methods. And if you click on it, it'll take you down to an example. Um, but you call these methods right on the actual item. So let's uh, let's do string methods. Let's do something like uppercase all or just uppercase. And we would say something like, we already have name up here, but I'll do it again. <clears throat> just declare it again, I don't know why. Give it a value, name is Aaron. And then we could do something like name dot, uh, what did they have, upcase is upper one. Upper frame, let's go see, I don't know. I don't. I never memorized these. 
Uh, upper converts a string into uppercase. Yep. So we'll call upper on it just like this, and we we'll call upper. Uh, we say, well, we do have to save it to a new value if we want to change that. Uh, I wonder if we can print it though. It's actually a good question. I wonder if we can print name that upper and it and see it. Let's find out. And yeah, there we go. So we just call upper on it. And so over here, we also, we, what do we do? We did two upper. So, but we had to call the package as well. So a little, little harder over here. Um, but we have some of the similar things, similar things we can do lower as well, I believe. JavaScript also has these things as well. There's like upcase and all this other stuff. And so now it lowercase everything. So great. We can also do exactly what we did here. And we can print some of this stuff out. So let's make a variable called S called why are we here? And then we can do S split is equal to S dot. I think it's just split. And I think because we are calling on here, I think I just have to pass in the separator like this. So we can go look at an example of this in a second or, or now. And split works a similar way. Um, oh, actually, so I think by default, I guess by default, it'll it'll split it on spaces by default. And maybe that's all it does. Let's let's see. Um, split a string into a list where each word is uh, is a list item. OK, so if you want to if you want to split up, if you would like to split up um, something into individual words. I guess that split does it doesn't seem like you can. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do a separator so you can. So by default, it'll do it on spaces. But if you want to select something, you just pass that in as well. So that's cool. So by default, we can just not pass in anything here. And if we look at it, look at S split, it should give us back a, a collection of things automatically split by the spaces in there. But if we wanted to do it by like W's, like we did before, we can throw that into uh, in as a parameter of the function. So we do W like this. And when we run it, um, that didn't work. Did we not save it? There we go. Now it fixed it. So now way different because we split it on the W's instead and we get a couple of different options there. All right, so let's take a look at these. Very similar, okay? For the most part, yes, the ghost stuff has a few more extra characters and uh, maybe a few more extra steps. We had to import a package to do any of this, any of these things, but uh, the concepts remain the same. So tangible takeaways, what, what, what do we what do we really wanna worry about today? Today, the goal was to just kind of get hands on with some strings to understand the kind of things you could do with a string. One, to make sure that we understood the strings were simply collections or lists of characters strung together. And uh, we can do a lot, we can do a lot of things with that because it is a collection, we can do a lot of things with that. We also learned that we can refer to uh, a string, especially in languages like Go, uh, a singular, a single character is a different type. It's a completely different type than a string. In Go, uh, it's referred to as a rune, and but rune specifically is uh, really to hammer home that there's there's an ASCII value uh, for this thing, and it is actually an alias frame, 32. It's actually an integer rather than anything else. We look at the ASCII table, we can kind of see those numbers. Uh, we also learned that because uh, because strings uh, have these collections, we can do things uh, when, we're, when we're printing them out to standard output. Uh, we have special characters that we can use to help format what it looks like and to get our output to, to the, um, to standard output to make it look really good. We can interpolate variables inside a string. So we can uh, insert variables within a string. And then, uh, you know, we can evaluate that value during the printout, which is cool. And that's called string interpolation. Uh, another thing we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about, we didn't talk about concatenation. Let's talk about concatenation really quick as well, because that's part of strings. Um, we also learned that uh, you, you could have string methods. You could perform some actions against strings. There are functions that you can run against strings to do some pretty cool things. Uh, these are called string methods, and there's a bunch of them that we can do. Things like uppercase everything, lowercase everything, split everything up. There's uh, title, so we can make the first letter of each word capitalized. We can do a bunch of cool things, and we saw that we can see those examples in the standard library of Go or in Python. 
uh, you can just look on W3 schools. This is where I would look. Um, I think that W3 schools is a better form of documentation for Python than Python's actual, actual documentation, to be honest with you. Um, but there are a bunch you can check out. Uh, one of the, like I said, one of the assignments you have is to check out some of these things and it'll help guide you and you'll get some hands-on experience with some of these things. Um, but it's pretty cool. Let's really quick talk about concatenation. Really, really simple thing, really quick. Uh, concatenation, all concatenation is, is the ability or, or the process of combining a string together end to end. All right, you're gonna hear concatenation a lot, uh, concatenating a string, and it's combining two strings together end to end. So, in something like Python, if I want to concatenate a string, I can do. I can just do something like print, and I can do hello, which is one string, and I can simply add it to another string. Okay? I'll save this. And hello and world. So it combines them together end to end. There's no space there because I didn't put it in a space. I could do multiple things if I wanted. If I wanted to insert a space, I could put a space here, or I could actually, you know, insert a space like this and add them together. This is string concatenation. And you know, it's 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 great. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's fine. This would also, this, this could also work if it were variables. Uh, you can concatenate strings this way, um, or you can do it through string formatting, but concatenation is something you're gonna hear and different ways to do it. This is one of the ways to do it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the Go Playground just because uh, we got a bunch of other stuff in there already, but Let's see what happens if we type in hello plus world here. Hello plus world. Let's see what happens. It works. Same thing, you can concatenate strings the same way here. Uh, these are the same data type. It understands what, uh, the, the compiler understands what to do with them. And you can, in fact, even though you're gonna learn when we, do, when we go into the integer stuff, to the math stuff, even though plus is an arithmetic operator, it's, it's for arithmetic, uh, it, it will work just fine for you to combine strings together end to end. I really just want you to know the term uh, concatenation. Concatenation means adding, uh, it, it means uh, combining a string together end to end. That's all concatenation means. All right. New decoding is Go a framework of Python or completely different language. It is a completely different language than Python, completely different. Also, what is up, uh, Lethizzi199, welcome, Meta Jezza. Uh, welcome, Ranch. Welcome as well. Thank you so much for the follow. What's up, Volkov? Welcome, Bizart. Good to have you. Thank you for the follows. Goat, good to see you. So my kid <laughs> for a pig. I love it. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow. Navibooks. Navibucks. Welcome, Map. Good to have you. Uh, ben, good to see you as well. Kura, a lot of people. Turbo, good to see everybody. Thanks for coming through. Thank you for uh, the follows. But that's it. That is it. I'm gonna push this up to the Git repo right now. This is not amazing code. This is not meant to be amazing code. This is meant to be, you know, hopefully you were typing out a lot of this as well. It's simply to be, hey, something you can play with, a little bit of reference uh, of, of things that we did throughout the class. Um, and so, let me uh, rm der test, uh, test. Oh, they're playing me. Let's do test. Is it no such file or directory? Oh, I'm tripping. Under test. Uh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Add all these. Uh, day four additions. Terrible git commit additions. All right, so now they're there. If you want to just do a git, if you've already cloned the repository, all you gotta do is go to this repository on your computer and do a git pull, and it will pull down all of the new data. Let's see normal Python over when I've done Python and data science. Oh yeah, yeah, this is very, uh, this is standard Python. We're just trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to get the, the, the basics down, get the concepts down. Again, conceptually, if you are just starting out how to code, if you just started decoded when we started decoded two weeks ago, 
it is okay for you to be confused right now, but conceptually, I hope you understand just what a string is. I think I, I hope we've hammered it home enough what it actually is. And I hope, I don't hope, you don't need to know right now like, oh, wow, I, I now know I can split up a string and I can capitalize things. I want you to know that there's the possibility for those things is is there that you that there are there are tools available for you to be able to manipulate text and those are called string methods. That's what I want you to learn right now. You can as long as you know that that thing exists, uh, you can you can reference it. You can Google how to actually do it. Okay, uh, so you know there are things that, to modify text to, to edit text. There are different ways of displaying text. You know you know a regular string maybe different from a string literal, the representation of it may be different and I can format a string in a certain way. Man, I know how to do it, but I know that you can format a string in a certain way. I know that uh, that in some languages, there are individual characters that are a different data type than a string. And we learned that those are runes inside of Go and that they represent something different than what a string represents. Uh, so this is the part that's important. Also, Forest Knight. I'm, I, I mean, if you are the Forest Knight that I'm thinking of, you just gave me a little bit of chills for, for joining one. Hello, thank you so much for the, for the prime sub. But uh, am I correct in assuming you are your YouTube Forest Knight? You are a programming Forest Knight. Am I, am I uh, you are coffee Forest Knight. I, I have ordered some of your coffee as well. Anyone who is, uh, is not familiar with Forest Knight, I'm, again, this is just an assumption. Maybe I'm giving a rant over someone who is not the person who I think they are. Either way, if you're looking for some uh, for some coding guidance. Uh, if you're looking for some coding guidance, head over to YouTube, uh, type in, you know, Google Force Knight. He has some amazing videos on uh, how to navigate the industry, tutorials on how to get up to speed with stuff, a VS Code stuff, a, a whole lot of really cool stuff that'll help give you some insight into the tech industry. I, I appreciate that. This, I, this is this is a big day for me, okay? This is a big this is a big Saturday, but please, absolutely. A legend has absolutely entered the, entered the chat for sure. Pretty dope. Uh, seriously, go check out YouTube. Give him a follow. Uh, a lot of cool, a lot of great content we're getting there as well. He also has uh, something called the Open Source Computer Science degree on GitHub. It's pretty dope. Uh, it's 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 a it's a list of a lot of free courses from like colleges like Harvard and stuff. Who, who, sometimes they offer some of their uh, courses, some of their videos and stuff. They do offer those for free to people that kind of share those things around. But he put together a really good guide uh, on if you're trying to really get into the nitty gritty and like really uh, get all of the deep computer science concepts. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really good place to go. It's a really, it's really cool. Um, but hundred percent, I no not, I'm, I'm all about, I'm all about the resources in the community. Um, and I also appreciate what you do. Like I said, you know, I've, I've been around the channel for a little bit. Like I said, I ordered a coffee, you know, I, I love it. I love what you do. Uh, a little bit of an inspiration for me, man. So it's pretty dope. That's pretty exciting. What's up, it's Jay Fields. How you doing today too? Uh, also someone who streams. So if you all want to see someone else cool, it's Jay Fields is also a streamer does, uh, Couple different things on here. Play some games. I want to play some games too. Does some coding and stuff as well. Thank you, Aya, for sharing that. Exactly. There we go. Pretty dope. But that's it. That's all we have for today. That is. Uh, thanks everyone for coming back through. I know we had some issues on Thursday. Hopefully, we've done enough to resolve them. Like I was telling you in the beginning, uh, I was gonna just go stream from the office like I normally would. But again, we have a little one on the way, so I do want to be as home as much as possible. Uh, I've talked to Comcast. They've helped me out a little bit. Uh, they're also going to be in, like uh, inserting a business class line here as well, which is good anyway, because I'm running a business. So like, that's good, which they claim, they claim will give me some more reliability and I'll get a little bit more dedicated bandwidth. We'll see about that. We'll, we'll see about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still skeptical. It is Comcast, you know, but we'll see uh, for sure. Uh, but hopefully that'll help out. Um, but today's stream went went well. I didn't have we didn't have any problems, so that's dope. So thanks everyone for coming through. Go enjoy your weekends. You will get a a bunch of stuff is about to drop for all three courses inside of Google Classroom. All right, all like there's about to be a bunch of stuff dropping in a few. So just keep an eye out. Uh, keep an eye out for all the things that are dropping. Again, there's no rush to do the things you have until the end of the eight weeks to kind of get those things done. But it'll it'll be good to get you going. So if you're looking for things on all three courses, all the stuff is about to drop. Right now, yeah, yeah, yep. They'll all be dropping in Google Classroom, so keep an eye out for those things. Uh, I'm also getting all the videos uploaded today. That's that's everything I'm doing today is getting everything situated after all of the weird uh, computer problems and stuff that threw me off of my game. My little script started to fail, and uh, and I had to do some of that manually. So I'm going to be fixing my script today as well for uploads. So all the everything should be on YouTube today as well. So appreciate it. Thanks for coming through. Who are we going to go raid today? Does anyone have any any uh, anyone in particular y'all would like to go see? Let's see who's on. I always have to go to myself first because it's the fastest way to get to the Science and Tech channel. 
uh, category. Let's see. Oh, oh, we definitely have to go to RWX Rob. RWX Rob is dope, super knowledgeable. Uh, um, and, whoa, getting a lot of feedback here. Oh, because it's my voice. That's I'm hearing myself. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go see RWX Rob. He's pretty dope. Knows a lot. Really smart. Great teacher. Very wise. But yeah, the natives were restless about the videos. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's all good. I, 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 it's fair. I told people it would be there 24 hours, and it wasn't. So I will definitely fix that. Um, I will rectify that situation today and get my script back in order. So cool, let's uh, do a raid and let's head over to RWX Rob. And seriously, RWX Rob really is a great resource as well. So, um, you know, check him out and see if you, I, I don't know what he's doing today, distracted by setting Get, GitHub statuses throughout. I don't know what he's doing today, but um, he's he's back on here. He was on here a lot and now he's, you know, he's, I think he kind of took a little break, but uh, yeah. All right, everybody have a good day. Right here in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, 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 four, four three, three, two, one. Peace out, everybody. I'm Now, peace out.